Are we starting this thing? Yes. <laughs> Mike Aiken. What's up, guys? Thank you for having me. What's up, man? I think that... So this is through Traction Coffee. Yes. Finally, all the supporters buying yes. the Traction Coffee. Yes. Mike Aiken. Got, they actually made this thing for me. And I right there. made sure to bring it. Yeah, that's sick. And we asked Trans over like... Logo. Over like Proper. season two, yeah. pretty much the whole time, who you guys wanted to see, and you were the most requested guest on this podcast. Yes. So we saved the traction Damn. money to make sure that's humbling. It was for you, yes, sir. <laughs> it's you, on, you it, and Jay Miron. Yeah, it's an honor to have you, here, man. Yeah, Jay, Jay, you're welcome to come on the podcast anytime. <laughs> You yes. said no like three times, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, persistence is key. Yeah, he'll I come one day. So, I love Jay. Uh, but yes, Traction Coffee, thank you for making this happen, yeah. even though I would have hoped that you would have done the podcast yeah, anyways yeah. when you're in town, but it got either you here. Way, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you got to do a little family yeah, vacation. Here. Yeah, I brought the family and we did a little family get out of the frigid weather for a minute. So oh, yeah. And nice. Muller set you up at his place. Yeah, yeah, we rented the spot from him and it's been nice. Nice. Nice little getaway. Cool. Is it uh, near the beach, I assume? Oh, yeah. Awesome. It's, you could definitely walk there if you wanted to. It'd be a bit of a walk, but it's not definitely closer than... Closer than... Closer than Salt Lake City. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. And should we plug our new sponsor before we start? Yeah, yeah. So Traction Coffee hooked it up getting Mikey out here because of the people supporting. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom, boom. It all goes in a big circle. Yep. And now we got... Oscar Blues. Yeah. Dale's Pale Ale. Yeah. And this so. is a daytime podcast, so it's going to be hard not to drink one of these, but yeah. I'm not riding today, so I'm going to have this episode. We're not required. We're not required. Not contractually contractually required to drink. But Slam a rock star, yeah. traction coffee, then Dale's. Yeah, you got so and many. Some water. <laughs> <laughs> I got the <laughs> podcast liquids, and I take about four peas during these things. But cool. We got a new sponsor. Hyped on that. It's going to get pretty crazy at night podcast with the beer sponsor, yeah. but I'm yeah. hyped on those. Um, yeah, obviously having you here, I feel like I feel like the weight of it, like making it good, you know. So I feel like we never really talk about like the beginning with with guests, but I I feel like with you, we should talk about kind of how you got into riding, your early mm. days, early influences, all that stuff. So let's let's start at the beginning. All right, sounds good to me. Yeah. So who who was your, what's your earliest memory of BMX? Uh, earliest memories, I guess I'll start with how I got the BMX bike. Mm-hmm. My dad this is my brother's friend and his name was Bivian. Biff for short. Biff. Biff. <laughs> Shout out to Biff. But he traded my dad a, a JMC Andy Patterson series, little laced up bike. It was like, it looked like a junior frame, but I think it was just how frames were. Okay. How they came. And so my dad... Sh- uh, changed his transmission and then he gave him the bike and then the next day he took me to the racetrack to see if it was something i wanted to do and i remember just sitting on the bleachers with my head in my hands like looking at the track like i can't believe this is ex- ex- has existed my whole life and i just found it you damn know? that's awesome and i was 11 love so it just for instant, sight. <laughs> instantly yeah i fell in yeah. love yeah and then i quit basketball and baseball and um, the next week, I, I came to sign up and stuff, and I signed up at the registration at Twin Peaks Supercross in Murray. My son actually ended up going to the the junior high that was right there because it was called Riverview Raceway, and that was what the school was called as Riverview Junior High. And then they changed it to Twin Peaks by the time I started. But anyways, the the next week when I went there to sign up, I, I got all signed up and they're like, okay, our local pros here this week. Uh, he'll he'll set he'll show you around the track and show you how to take stuff. And it was it was fuzz, you know, like <laughs> hey, yeah. he's like, okay, first thing you're gonna want to do, man, is lower your seat and lower your stem because I had a little <laughs> a little wedge stem and it was up a little bit. Mm. The guy had set up and the seat was like, you know, to the moon. Yeah. And yeah, he showed me around the track and showed me how to take everything, and it was that's epic. Like, little do I know, did I know that that's like the beginning of like a a pretty long relationship, you know? Yeah. How, how old were you at this point? Eleven. Eleven. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The dude who showed you the first steps is Fuzzy Hall. Yeah. One of the. And I didn't. I didn't know. You know, jumping. I was just like, oh, cool. This dude's here. Gonna mm-hmm. show me. Show me around. And so, when you started, obviously, what, how long did you race for? I raced till I was about not very long, only like fourteen and okay. fourteen and a half, maybe fifteen. Okay, on and off though, you know, 
I didn't take it seriously at all by the time I was probably 14. I feel like you probably were pretty good at it, though. Uh, I just know. <laughs> uh, A little modesty. I uh, <laughs> Our track got plowed uh-huh. the, because it wasn't... Um, wasn't the what is it the usdc no usa bmx stuff something. something it wasn't like certified for the to have the land or whatever oh okay and i can't think of the word right now the but the acronym yeah, yeah it's all good. <laughs> oh well got plowed yeah. for reasons yeah, like everything yeah. gets plowed. They, they did rad canyon and we just kind of went off to our trails and did that instead you know because we like jumping anyways it, it like so you were forced out of racing basically by getting your track plowed yeah okay yeah that's and I, I mean, I won every race up until I turned expert, <laughs> and then it, you know, I just loved it. Yeah. And I would, I definitely wasn't, I definitely wasn't fun to be around when I lost. <laughs> <laughs> my parents remind me quite often. Same with, same with my sister. You were a dick. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I didn't like to lose. Yeah. So is that's uh, pretty funny because like. For me, seeing you, I never really thought of you as like a competitive dude, you know, because you're like the as, raddest chorus pro and the <laughs> not fucking man. around. That's the truth, man. Like, thanks, I appreciate the most that. mimicked pro, Especially not because they of, coming from you. Oh, thank you. Um, I wasn't. The thing is, is I wasn't competitive against other people. It was. It's always been against myself and like what I could think I can do. Yeah. When I let myself down, I was. I'm really hard on myself. Like. You know? So if you got beat, you were like, I'm I'm not fast enough. I got to yeah. get faster to beat this dude. And the thing is, is a lot of the dudes have been racing, you know, like I, I even raced Darren Reed and he blew me out of the water, you know, like at the gold cup. <laughs> so you cup. were traveling then? Yeah. Yeah. Not, not a he's lot. he's from the Northwest. Not a lot. We went to the gold cup in Reno, Nevada okay. and like him and Donnie Robinson. I mean, Donnie uh, Robinson was like a freaking. Yeah. He was uh, like a phenom. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he was like a whole straightaway ahead of me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> by dude. that by that time he was racing probably 10 plus year, 10 mm. or so years. And yeah. I was just starting, but yeah, you could definitely tell those guys when I watch old footage, you can definitely tell those guys have like a stronger pedal and like everything. I was just kind of figuring it out, you know, but I, I actually love that. I started with racing. It's actually, I remember the gold cup, standing in line you got like a, a clock with the top 12 pros mm-hmm. for i can't remember oh, yeah, what race I remember it was that. and i st- was standing in line to get their autographs and like bf was my favorite racer you know because uh-huh. i like he'd always you'd always watch how all the pros took the rhythm section and kind of see which way you liked or was different or, and i was like his because it was different and faster you know mm-hmm. so i was like yeah that's dude <laughs> I remember those clocks. Like, every every yeah. number had a different pro around. The oh, whole I have clock. no was, idea. It was what cool. You guys yeah. Talking about. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, man, that's a very common theme with like sick riders is the racing for a few years at least. You yeah, know, the, the bike skills. It's definitely a good way to get a lot of the fundamentals, and I I feel like it's coming back around because the pump tracks and mm-hmm. things like that help kids. And it's so fun. That's a good point. Yeah, man. it it is. Uh, those pump tracks definitely I mean, help with just like I'm basics sure of I'm sure clips oh, yeah. do to a point, but it's just different it seems like with the the pedaling action <laughs> with what the clip pedals oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. but I, I never know i never knew because i i clipped them once the mountain bike and i was like yeah it's not for me yeah. no yeah. yeah that is a weird thing with racing that, i don't like, like i feel trapped you know yeah it's scary. <laughs> you eat shit a lot different when you have clips on <laughs> yeah. it ain't the same there's no bailing when uh so fuzzy was did you have co- like regular interactions with fuzzy from that point on or was it kind no, of the, the it's funny because fuzzy just posted this picture too like of him it, we called them um headley's trails uh-huh. they're our friend the headley's the race too they had like a whole family or kids that raced and they lived right their house is like their backyard was or the trails then there was a food for less right there too so some people called them food for less trails but anyways my friend tim thompson was just telling me he's like i remember that day don't you i'm like dude i don't remember hardly anything for <laughs> 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 like when people trigger my memory yeah but it takes that you know and uh but he's like i remember that day and it was, i remember fuzz coming to the trails now that he, we, me and him were talking about it and he was building a new new era style dirt jump you know mm. and that was just the dirt jump that you couldn't roll in between you know and back when we were riding the trails all the time it was kind of the new way of doing it he was saying i mean i don't know i was 
I'm in the anyway. I'm in the background of him doing the knack knack seat, the knack knack eggs up. Oh yeah, you know, a kid wearing a helmet and stuff. <laughs> not the not the cover of Ride. No, it's not no, a cover. Okay. It's just in the in the magazine. He just posted it a little while ago. I don't know, but he drew an arrow pointing to the kid, and he's like, "Whoever can guess this kid." It's right. It's right here. Here, right <laughs> yeah. Wow, knack knack X. Okay, I was thinking that the cover, the one footed sea crab X. Yeah, but damn, that's dope. I'm the kid with the helmet on. My mom made me wear a helmet every time I would. I go ride. I think like the first old footage I saw of you was at Fuzzy's house. Like they were doing a Road Fools. Yeah, and, Road Fools too. That was kind yeah. of you were little, but you were so good. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was probably thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. Yeah. So damn, already two years in, and you were killing it like that. <laughs> I, I I get so upset at myself. I had, would try to ride Fuzz's old yard in Roy, and I couldn't get through the six pack because that that yard man, you had to like pedal and pump your ass off, and like you had to have the skills, you know. Yeah, you were three years into riding, riding so with like <laughs> some of the best yeah. riders. And at that point, Fuzz's yard was like the as far as backyard trails was that that was like the one yeah. nobody had a setup it was like really, that. It was and really it, looked, it looked dusty. Yeah, it probably was. I yeah. mean, all jumps were kind of like that <laughs> yeah, back then. Yeah. Though. They were just like, yeah. now now jumps are perfect. Back then, it was like, all right, it's ready to go. There's only like one foot of Even, packed land. I remember Bar Spinner coming to town when those guys were filming for for something anyway. And he had footage of me. My brake cable snapped on the last one of the six-pack, and I <laughs> ran into a truck and then flipped over the truck bed. <laughs> it's on film somewhere. Sick. So you were able to go to Fuzz's like whenever you wanted at that point already, like uh, a few years into riding? Not whenever I wanted. Like Tim Tim Thompson, he's always been, me and him have always been really close, and he was like three years older than me. So he got his license, and you know, I was like 13. Mm-hmm. So when he went up there and rode, I'd go with him usually. And it was me, him, and Panty Boy pretty much. And yoda sometimes but yeah that was kind of my my little crew and we'd go up north and behringer actually would come down and cart us around from time to time me and panty boy went to gold cup with matt when there was a dirt jump contest there and we were like 14 you know yeah (laughs) so is that like were you constantly just riding trails too while racing yeah like when did kind of freestyle really really take Uh, over i was i mean I was riding trails, but they were like rollers and little jumps and mm-hmm. like, you know, there's like a couple of rollers and a table, then three more and little things like that and trying to take that tabletop jumps, I'd do tricks over and things like that. But it really kind of took over when I was our trail our track got plowed. Yeah. 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 And uh I think the the first time you got sponsored was well, I guess who was your first sponsor? Um I think it was at 97 maybe 98 but bully bikes bully yeah out of florida how does how does that come about how does I it think, get from salt lake get sponsored yeah. because fuzz and tj lavin we did a a little dirt jump show at a historic farm and like by my house called wheeler farm mm-hmm. and they they let them build let us build a dirt jump out front and we kind of did like a little show and those guys had seen how how much better I'd gotten and things like that. And they, they knew people in the industry, obviously. So I think that they talked with them and got me my first deal. Also, Fuzz actually paid for me my first fly, time flying. Oh, really? I flew to Pittsburgh. And I entered, I rode in the, uh, the dirt jump contest. They had, I rode an amateur because I like couldn't a, like see. Like a dirt circuit or something? Or what I, I think it? so. Yeah. I think it was a dirt circuit, but... I just that was like 97 90, yeah that's crazy and i rode amateur because i'm like i can't ride against all the people i look up to it was like ground chuck was there and you know poon jab and all the dudes i'm like fuck bennett <laughs> I'm like, Dude, i was all intimidated right so i'm like fuck i can't do that <laughs> so crazy the first time i ever got flown anywhere was by chris bennett to pittsburgh oh really like, around that, like what? same age yeah that's yeah, awesome he could put me on like the new square one thing flew me to pittsburgh and i was like oh my god that's amazing i For had a dirt no jump idea. jam at mark fatazzi's that's so weird how yeah similar that is so when was your first sponsor like how old are you uh, you were a bit younger right i probably got on like volume and square one when square one was trying to make the revamp with Bennett around like 15. Okay. Yeah. Around the yeah. same time. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. And then I stopped racing around like 13 too. Par- <laughs> awesome. Parallels. Crazy. Yeah. yeah that's I know. Awesome. I was like, Whoa. I didn't know you're like the whole background story. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, so 
uh, other other first influences, like other early influences, like you you mentioned BF, like you had um, to see some of the freestyle stuff of BF. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess I, I think the, the first BMX video I ever saw was Dirty Deeds. Oh mm. wow! So I was like, oh. "Fuck, dudes are doing this shit." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I I'd seen all the parts and rooftops and BFs, and I mean, just Dirty Deeds, and I was just like, "Damn, all right." This yeah. is the expectations yeah. and you know and that was a progressive video yeah. especially i yeah. mean it. i mean i'd i'd seen rad or my parents i was homesick for one day my mom came in the room and she's like i was gonna wait till christmas but since you're sick oh uh, they had rad for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> i must have been like 13 or something <laughs> which is super cool but it's not going to show you like what dirty deeds oh yeah, yeah yeah it's totally different parallels yeah <laughs> I um mean, the airwalk's pretty sweet <laughs> <laughs> yeah back up on the mattress <laughs> yeah <laughs> So how old, how old are you when Road Fools Two came came to Fuzz's house? Jeez, I'm like fifteen. Okay, so were yeah. you sponsored at that point? Or? No. Okay. No. So that was I, I think I was on a, I was on the Supercross frame that uh, I'd gotten from the bike shop I raced for. Steve Spencer. He actually works for GT now, hmm. but he had a bike shop called Over the Bars Bike Shop, and they were co-sponsored by Supercross. Okay. So it was a Supercross I had taken all the stickers off of, and I had metal stickers on the side. Remember <laughs> when metal first came out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> Were you on Mosh at one point, too? Was that right after Bully? Yeah, because right if that was a trivia right question, up. I would have said Mosh was your first sponsor. So I was wrong. No. Uh, I like to say what's up to Brian Fell, too. He took care of me when I was on Bully, and he's, he's an awesome dude. Hell yeah. Well, it's funny because I actually have a quote in here so from, bully and mosh a lot of people probably don't even know you're on both of those yeah i was only uh, on, i was on bully for a year and then i went from bully to mosh and then it was i was on there for a year also and then there's was like, it there's fit a, ever from yep damn there was a quote from cool. from bennett that says uh, mike was so psyched on his mosh uh that he took his bully in the back of the house and and beat it to a pulp yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> we were just young man we we're just like yeah <laughs> Dude, aggression whatever yeah yeah i mean up in arms <laughs> shit we could figure out it's the funny bike, the bike destroying phase basically <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> just kids having fun i mean and then i mean coming to find out after i, I had the mosh for a while i was actually because you know how you build a bike and you're all stoked on it and you're like look at it you're like yeah yeah dude you build the mosh and then you look at it the big square one with all the tubes and be like <laughs> I hate that when you put something together. And yeah, you're hyped on. You're like, I gotta ride this. Now. And I, I had the. Um, that's funny. That's it. That's that's the follow up quote. Is that uh, this is from the? You're the, like, man, where's that? The bully? Twelve, day, 12 days of <laughs> yeah. Aiken that Doyle Doyle said, yeah, I'm sure he was real psyched to ride a bike that looked like a toaster. Especially when I put the square. Oh, there's one some bad stickers. frames in that era. Yeah. Especially when I put the square one stickers on it, I was like, motherfucker, it really, <laughs> square. It really is square. <laughs> <laughs> Are these the new square one frames? <laughs> yeah. So was uh was I think there's like footage. Obviously, it's there's there's uh. Like you could see the like, which bike is that? That's right a mod. That's, that's the that's mod. A D- Look at that's that thing, dude! It looks like a Walmart bike. The DJ, from there. the steeziest guy in BMX riding the least steezy bike yeah. <laughs> ever made. That's still bully, making it look good right though. There. That's bully. Yeah. That's a, actually a Huntington Beach Ooh. contest. I think. Yeah, I'd over rotate threes all the time, <laughs> spinning into my front foot. <laughs> so you just started riding contests young. Yeah, I'd always so go. With, was, I'd always go with Behringer and just enter. You know, me and Penny Boy would. And I'd never even came close to making a good experience order. though to ride with all those good dudes and just yeah send it was, it when they it call was your cool name. riding with like the likes of butler and like stricker and even bar spinner would ride all the time back mm-hmm. then and just all the dudes i looked up to being young or you know yeah just seeing them in real life and being like okay you were thrown into it quick you know like from meeting fuzzy at the track that yeah. first time to like being in his yard i guess, and then going I guess so contests, I did, when like, you're younger you don't really think anything it seems slow it, right but yeah it's, yeah what uh, that's fast it's like yeah. only a few years and you're riding these hb contests yeah with Sean was, butler and the, the dudes it's cool because i i mean butler and all the the soil dudes i pretty much looked up to first and then kind of found out about the east coast and through just watching videos and decided because for a while i even would do bar spins and suicide no handers and that's kind of figuring out what i wanted to do you know and i just it didn't from the bike setup to just 
the trickery to everything, I just felt more comfortable just kind of flowing and having things be set up more like my race bike. And, you mm-hmm. know, I don't know. Was, yeah, I was going to ask that because you were like, you were around all these influential people, but you never really rode like anybody. Like Behringer, even he did all this crazy bar spin tricks. I mean, he had tons of bar spin variations and seat. he could do everything, you know? Yeah. And I, I look up to those guys still, but it's just for different reasons. You know, I just kind of saw it as, I want to do something a little bit different than everybody else, you know, even from your typical, I don't know, the trail guys I looked up to, it's like, I want to do that, but do it my way, you know? Yeah. I always felt like your, your riding, at least like at the core level was like a evolution of, of fuzzies almost yeah because he fuzzy had a lot of like those can 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 x up tricks and, and kind of variations and combos thanks and man like i've that. always liked tricks that are bmx you know like yeah. you can look and be like man that's fuck, that's bmx yeah right there. yeah <laughs> hell yeah that's a thing there's a lot of like steezy style guys but mikey is like i think you and bowen were to me like always like the dudes had the most style right. but also did sick tricks yeah. and everything you two yeah. did was just like perfect there's never a trick that you like would bring out half ass or anything. I was like, you did it, you did it. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. There's a, there's especially a, be co- being put in the next to Bowen. You and Bowen, man. Ribs. Like the, you guys are in your own lane forever. Like there's never been anyone to me that has like been there. Jason Watts is a close one, like style with tricks, you yeah. know, like there's yeah. some dudes nowadays, yeah, it's, but it's, it's it cool took to like see, a long time. See people like Bowen and Watts and those dudes, they, they do all the trickery too. You mm-hmm, know, I yeah. never really, you did though. I, you had these sick tricks well, so that were like really gnarly, a, I have a, though. I have a quote. Yeah. I have a quote. Like one from, foot invert, like the nastiest one foot three invert, and then look back. Like yeah. still, like Jason does them, but no one has done I've one seen like some that. Good one ones in the past little bit too that have been fun that to see. That one kids. you did an anthem though. So I remember doing those over. We're watch anthem for dude. sure. I remember doing those over. Oh, gosh, I can't remember the section, but it's next to the fence. It's like a hip um, to the left and then a hip to the right. Mm. Where at? Posh. Posh. Oh, okay. Okay. It's you're not gonna. We're not gonna confirm it anyway. But anyways, so. <laughs> I remember doing it and like feeling like getting all inverted and having to like adjust and pull my bike under me. I yeah. miss. I miss a lot of those tricks because I still know what they feel like in my yeah. head. You know, I'm, I know, when I want to go there, I just go there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's definitely all, gonna get to there. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, but, whew, but, um, I have yeah, a man. You're. All the stuff before your injury, it was like you weren't even in your prime. You kept getting better by like the month. It seemed yeah. like any footage that was coming out was like, oh Thanks. my god! Like, um, you have a quote that says, "I ran away from from stuff that was popular, tricks that were popular." Yeah, I, I, I just didn't like. I don't know. I'm, I've always been weird that way. Even anything that becomes popular, I always kind of run away from it. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, eh, I don't. You know, if everyone's going that way, I'm going to go this way. That's cool. Create yeah. a different kind of, I don't know. I've always, even with just dressing or the way things are being done, just in everyday life, I just kind of try to make my own way, you know? Yeah. You're not a sheep. You're not even close. <laughs> I remember at the the Dew Tour, the Salt Lake one, I think you won it because you went to two of them. You won yeah. one and then, did you I win got, both of them? No, no. The first one I got I got third. Okay. So I remember just being like, because I was right. We're jumping around, but this is the winning or stuff. Yeah. And I remember just being like, dude, like everyone else is wit barring. And I told you, I was like, it's so sick that you don't have to like do any of those tricks and you have your own style. Yeah. And you still just stood out so much and ended up. This is the one you won? Yeah. Yeah. This is the year. Yeah. Yeah. You just went out there and it was like, you'd go off a lip and do whatever felt good. (laughs) It was like, yeah. A lot of the other guys practiced. Was it was it was it one there. run counts or two? I there think it's an average. Yeah, they were always two out of three. Yeah, I. This footage was like slow. I told my whole family. Is, yeah, my whole family too. I'm like, make sure you come and in, in qualifying because I probably won't make finals. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm like, you, you it, only went to one because I was like, going to all these, and you just went to the Utah one, right? Yo, yeah, yeah. They, look at they that, gave me the, a special what, invite, and you won. Look at the it way this so wraps. Cool. Yeah. It was like one motion. Uh. It looked like it's two tricks. But. And it was, I mean, it's always people doing tail ups and bar spins, yeah. but like, especially this era was when like Cam White was bringing the bar flip to whip. Like there was a yeah. lot of new stuff yeah. happening and he came out. There. A lot of just, craziness. Was there some but bitterness? no one does those tricks. I don't know. Like honestly, that. I didn't really pay attention to was it. Was bitterness? Because I remember there being some like controversy. I you think know? there was like, a little bit. I mean, there had to be yeah. just, 
because they're just known for. I think at every one of those contests yeah. there was controversy though. Yeah, yeah true, true. It didn't true. matter, it doesn't matter what there's side a lot. Of... There was a lot of money up on the lines every month. You know, <laughs> it so. doesn't matter what side of the spectrum you're on. No, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just I remember being up in the in the roll in and it was so serious up there, dude. Because a lot people on are about the, to send their lives away. And a you're lot's going on the, the line, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, fuck this. I'm dropping it and gonna go hang out with the fans and have yeah. fun. You yeah, know? hell yeah. Yeah. So I was like high fiving and signing autographs or whatever, listening to stories. I almost missed my run. They like I I like ran up the roll in. And had to hurry and drop in. And stuff. <laughs> Did you ride? You were, yeah. I remember right? like being <laughs> influenced by Mikey on that, just yeah. like how because that was an era where because I was having a lot of fun in the beginning and then I started doing good and kind of like might have started going into that phase of like getting serious well, up there. I, I've been there, man. Like you let your head get in the you way do. and you're fucked. I remember you know? riding super bad at this because I was kind of like, I want to win this one or because I started doing good at yeah. him. But then seeing Mikey, how he's just having fun, it literally changed me back. Like I remember this event kind of like, like seeing him it influenced me to be like, dude, go oh, back yeah. to what you were doing. Like well, that it, one is specifically, I was in my head, like trying too hard. That's it. Yeah. Bottom line. Influence. For sure. Influence. In a cool way. Like in a, like a way. Yeah. Bottom line for me has always been, it's about fun and that's how it started. I mean, I remember the King of Dirts, right? Contest way back in the day, GT put on. It was like you'd win like eighteen hundred bucks, and I remember being like, "Fuck, that's so much money." Yeah, yeah. And it is. But I remember like TJ Lavin and all the East Coast dudes, like Punjab, and all of us um, would do trains. You know, like mm -hmm. all like the whole damn practice, pretty much. And that, and then I mean, when the Dew Tour and even Vans contests came to be, it was like they kept asked us not to do them like trains oh really we're like fuck you in, pra <laughs> in practice yeah wow i crazy. remember tj talking I wonder if they're like the medical people won't be able to handle it if everyone goes down at once tj talking to the dudes at the x games because he was like dude you're not gonna let us do trains that's like what we do you know like because it's how we loosen up how we have yeah. some fun yeah that's interesting. So, that's <laughs> it. That's honestly sick to hear that TJ is involved in no, that because TJ, I always think of him as being such a like I I nah, know TJ Lavin's as a man. person, but yeah. like it, like as a, I always think of him as being a competitor in those. Oh, he he you know? was, but yeah. he fully wanted to have fun too. Yeah. And he yeah. that, that takes the load off, and I think, anyways, not sp speaking for him, but it's just. Yeah, even at those when he'd speak up, I'm like, yeah, listen to this dude. He's won this shit. Just <laughs> chill out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's sick. Hell yeah. Is there other dudes that like, who'd you, you know, like who were the ones that you got along with really well that like people wouldn't expect, I guess, um, you know, like, like a Nyquist or a, or a Stephen Murray or somebody. M Murray and I always got along. We were always Murray's doing different things, yeah. Yeah. but he, he knew he was kind of in that frame of mind because he was race background and all that stuff and he knew that it i don't know we just got along good and even nyquist and i we didn't ever really have beef i mean it was always like you do bar spins and tricks and all this i, and just had a, I, I don't and it's just do I what had, you do i had a flashback of the x games where you had 666 on your helmet Right? Isn't that? I don't, Garrett always had six six six. Yeah. Get, no, I think I you, know you, you, had, you had you had you had something had, on your helmet. Because he was sponsored by six point and he just took all the stickers. Yeah, I did. No. I did. I I had the you had FBM sticker on my helmet forever. Wasn't there some sort of scene where they kept trying to film one side of your helmet and you kept turning around and the guy kept turning the camera? Or am I, I don't mixing think that so. up with somebody else? I don't, I don't know. remember. Yeah. Honestly, Garrett okay. was a six six six. So forever. Like maybe maybe that's what I'm. Maybe I remember I'm, Garrett coming to the. Um, what were those he first came to the do tours. tours and him and his dad and he was just a tiny little kid yeah he ripped though oh yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah even back then I mean this yeah Garrett's like early early 2005 influence was like so he was like a little baby Mikey He's, but everyone yeah. was yeah. in that era everyone yeah. wanted to be Mike Aiken <laughs> it's well, crazy well like it, it, Nathan had the had the Nathan yeah he, everyone he like, had the email address like Aiken clone or something <laughs> like that yeah, at like, like aol.com or something like that <laughs> too nah, real it's, too real it's definitely, you know, like, definitely humbling to hear because both those dudes are responsible for oh yeah such crazy stuff yeah. these days and i see clips of them and i'm like what yeah i'm confused dakota dakota, <laughs> dakota is right. a little you go out in the in low-tech vancouver 
your i mean the quality these days isn't isn't so good of what you yeah. find online but i'm like yeah. is that aiken or is that dakota <laughs> you know because he's like doing, awesome. he's doing a rail and he's doing the hanger Chase over Hawk. There's you know so like, many like yeah. high high level pros yeah. that were like baby I, akins yeah. yeah i tried to put a lot of those dudes that were on low tech and even fit at the beginning just under my wing you know because mm-hmm. they're such rad young kids and i'm like i'm gonna show them like kind of heath always looked out for me you know heath penner yeah heath penner's the man and he always kind of like kids hey, you know you gonna want he does um set me straight you know and i always respected that so i just tried to kind of do the same thing a little constructive kids, criticism you know? to help out a little yeah. bit um before we drift from too far from it so bully to mosh Mm-hmm. And then Mosh was yeah, how staying long? on track. Yeah, we don't do these very often. Yeah, I want to. I want to <laughs> keep on the timeline. Yeah. Mosh, I was on for a year. A year. Yeah. And uh, what was that? Where did obviously you had some like travel budget with Bully because you're going to hunting. Yeah, it was and stuff travel. Like that. Travel. Yeah. It was Mosh like a full a full. Mosh check. was full check, and like I remember being able to pay. Like I got a new car and was able to pay my car payment. I was still living at home with my parents, but. I mean, I didn't have any responsibility, you know, I was like 16, 17 when I got on Mosh, 17, 18, actually, I yeah. think, somewhere in there and just living it up, you know, mm-hmm. um, did, uh, life is cheap back then. Who, <laughs> at a exactly. Yeah. You don't need much to be like, you, <laughs> who else, who else was on the team with you? Like, what was that year um, or two? Like with, with Mosh? Cause the Ardeline, oh, it was Ardeline right? Bagley, um, Marcus Wilkie got on. I think he was on at the beginning. Heath. Mm-hmm. And I don't, yeah, I think. Is, it, is this the Mosh right here? Yeah. Well, that was Bagley's frame. That one's not too bad. Yeah, that one wasn't too look bad. How long the, look how long it is, though. Yeah, the rear end was really. But and, I, that, and that's the square tubing? No, that's. Oh, it wasn't like sizes of back ends for people that. I right? no, it was all just like even the fourteen inch, yeah. the bullies were really long. Yeah. yeah, I remember even back then being like, "Damn, this thing's long." <laughs> that rail's sick. Apparently, this is his first rail. Really? Yeah. It was, nice yeah. twenty-five stair. I did <laughs> a little baby park one to begin with, but ooh, yeah, that rail was at Weber State. That took me forever, and I remember Losi throwing rolls of film at me. <laughs> 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 that's literally that's the way, way that's the like way shit. it used to be <laughs> yeah. like literally when after like road fools was in san diego i think uh john paul uh was was shooting photos on it and i i found rolls of film and i, de- <laughs> really? and I developed them afterwards because the guy didn't pull whatever it was yeah. and he wasted like a couple rolls of film and he's just like fucking i remember that's sick and you were so hyped to see, <laughs> see what it's like when it's you took a long time to do something like you felt bad you hell know, yeah like, Fuck. yeah yeah yeah, now nowadays people apologize. It's like don't apologize, but back then it's like it's yeah. okay, man. No, you yeah, actually you like, should apologize. Yeah. <laughs> it's you like, oh, every tr- like, every try is money. So yeah. I want to talk. Yeah, about, I want to talk. About you the, created the, your own style. Yeah, I want to talk about the the creation of the style. Like obviously you're you're switch footed, goofy footed, whatever the yeah. term shit footed, fuck footed, whatever. Yeah. The, don't call me that. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I was telling. Shit footed when your back foots to the peg. Yeah, I always just did stuff the way that it felt best for me in my head you mm-hmm. know i never really paid attention to what way you do stuff because if someone tells you how to do something in life what do you say i'm gonna do it my way mm-hmm. i do anyways i'm not there's no fucking way to do a certain do something I just get it done you know so i never really put those limitations or labels on myself i just kind of was like well this way my head works out better and it was cool because it opened up a lot of different tricks for me that weren't normally done and even when I learned one footed tables, like, yeah, learn them opposite because it doesn't work out. You know, you're, you're do the half back crank when you try to land. So I was like, okay, learn this the other way. And I get kids saying to me online, like, I, I can't do it. That's, that's my opposite way. And I'm like, learn it. Just yeah. start little, you know, like it eventually you do something long enough and eventually it starts to feel right. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, even with switching my feet and stuff, I, you ride like that, just cruising down the road, it starts to feel normal. Mm-hmm. At first, it feels like you're freaking 20 feet apart. Yeah. But then it just starts to come in, and you start to mess around with it more, and it opens up a whole new chapter of things. So, was there, were you like obsessive about the way things felt, or was it like, 
Mm, no. Con- like, was it conscious, I guess? Is More the right obsessive way? about the way things look. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's valid, yeah. Because so many pictures of myself I'd see and clips I'd see and be like, fuck, that's out into the world? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was just me being really overly critical of myself. And, yeah, I just... The crazy thing is I didn't realize where I was at writing wise until I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. You yeah. know, That's... cause I, I remember the year, year before something filming for whatever. And I came home and I was all frustrated and I'm, you know, you, they have little washouts. Everyone does every once in a while, but I'm like, fuck to Trista. I'm like, I'm, I'm washed up. I can't, you know, do <laughs> just spazzing out. And that was at the top of my game, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Everyone goes through shit and it's just, need to realize what you have when you're at it you know it's, it, yeah. yeah for me i yeah. didn't i appreciated it but it kind of happened so quick that i i remember laying in the bed and not being able to use the restroom and it's like you know right there like Fuck. five feet away and being like motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> how old were you when you the injury happened it was like 2007 right 2008, 2008. 25 you're 25 yep. dude yeah so you started at 11 yep. and then to 25 was a hell of a career already. Young. But realistically, 25 in this day and age is kind of young. Yeah. I feel like I all, pro, people are like, like... What I consider pro, like, when I first got on Mosh, when it was really, no, bully, I guess, because they paid for me to go places, and the first contest I went to... Sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. No, you're good. Well, I'll, my I'll brain, bring it. My I'm, brain works. We're on more of a timeline than we've this ever is been. How, this is how our brain works, too, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, this is, yeah, this is, I'm back on track. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll circle back. Don't worry. Night no, or not? We cares. we don't. We, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um. So the yeah, you were pro for like nine years, basically. Yeah, yeah before I, the fall. I, damn, it yeah, seems like ten, to me you're pro for like years, twenty-five about, years. I, yeah. I mean, the amount of output, like even just even just clicking around on the internet, like you had a lot of video parts. You went on a lot of fucking trips that were chronicled. You did a lot of fucking cool shit, dude. More Thanks. than I, more. I mean, I don't, I don't regret it. Yeah. Any of it, or no. like you said, I wish it was it was longer. Obviously, you wish, yeah, things didn't happen the way they did. But I don't know. Some of some of me thinks it's a good thing because people would always say to me like, "You're the last one that would happen to," and I'm like, "Was yeah." getting in gnarly crashes or because I was like a cat and you could jump out of stuff and you know people are like you have nine lives <laughs> but um, well I mean I, I have this saved for later in it but I, I mean I think your fall saved lives I hope it did yeah I think, I think it did because you watch it go to go to posh today and and when you fell nobody was riding helmets nobody yeah. and, and, and now everybody's riding helmets. it did but, take somebody yeah. like you because yeah. Mad Dogs was really bad too but he was such a savage like cinder he's yeah. flipping yeah. and like so it's like even though he was the best at what he did and Stevens was on like, a double flip yeah you know the, and it's like yours yours was like kind of brushed under the table a little bit because his, his, yeah. his he was wearing a helmet also in a, in a contest I guess yeah but those helmets didn't do anything yeah, yeah. there was a shitty helmets back yeah. then yeah. too they weren't certified or whatever they were so just like if I would have been wearing action. one I don't know how much it probably would have helped a little bit a little but, I mean but I now think, these certified ones man I whacked my head not long ago and I thought I was I was in the air like I'm fucked I have and a whack and I was like Dude, I was, that should have knocked me out. What helmet yeah. was it? What was it? Triple eight. It's pretty pretty oh. dope. I I actually, think the S ones are better. I don't know. Uh-huh. I'm gonna say it anyways. So I went to Barringer's house and I forgot my helmet. I'm like, fuck. You know, I want to ride his yard. Mm-hmm. So I, I borrowed his helmet and it was uh S and M one. Yeah. And I hit my head pretty good and I was like, you know, it not rattled me. Like yeah. I was like, fuck. Wind knocked out of me and hit my head pretty good. Slid to the right and whacked my head. But was this after the injury? Yeah. yeah. So the S and M helmet was a certified one. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, they're, I mean, they're I, different. I bought a Jira one. You know, a bike shop. Oh helmet. yeah, yeah. And does it the, have the pips or whatever? Yeah, the it is? mips. Mips. And then yeah. the next day, we were riding the new cement park up in Logan, and I hit my head equally as hard or harder because it was cement. And I was yeah. like. This was really loud, and that was it. And I was like, "Fuck!" 
So I was like a, a test dummy for him, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Helmet stuff is helmet stuff is wild. Those mix I, things like, are, are they're cool. They're expensive, but yeah. I spent sure. spend the money, dude, because we've spent a lot more drama and cash on my whole whole or, ordeal. Yeah, yeah you'll spend course, everything yeah. to get healthy. You know, why not spend it to yeah. try and prevent? Just to, just to nail it down, I feel like the your fall from the outside perspective was was like, oh shit! If if Aiken can fall, like we can all fall. Doing something that he can do, right. whether it's whether no. it was whether it was gnarly or not, like he knew he could do it. And it's like if Aiken can fall, it's crazy. We can all it fall. happened to anyone. Yeah, and it was like it checked a lot of people, myself yeah. included. You know, and myself and, included. And you know, I started and, slowly getting yeah. on the helmet train. Yeah. It took Even, a while. And it's hard. And it's hard. It, it is hard because yeah. it wasn't really a known thing. Not known, but it wasn't really something you did. I mean, helmet. Why? Yeah. You know, I mean, exactly. Yeah. You even after, like, why? even after it was hard for me to wear one, dude, which is <laughs> yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, fuck, I don't need that. <laughs> you yeah, know, but yeah. it, it takes some, you know, something I've, happening. And it, the same thing. I mean, my dad, I remember telling me about skiing, the skiing industry kind of going through that too. Like, where it took someone really, you know, like Sonny Bono getting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The tree, <laughs> tree, right? yeah like, yeah. so. Even in the skate world, you know, they're like so anti-helmet, like core BMXers, but there's been some injuries in there. They keep them yeah. under the table a little more, but you notice I'd they're rather, all wearing helmets now. And, yeah. know, a lot of them are wearing helmets them, in yeah. park now. Being anti is cool, but fuck, being able to like not be vegetable the rest of your life is a lot cooler. I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because when you're there and you're like, motherfucker, all I had to do is wear a little piece of plastic and I won't have to go through this drama. Like, and once you get used like, to it, you don't even notice it's on your head. <laughs> no. Yeah, cool yeah. And there's some cool helmet companies now, like more and more cool ones, which yeah. I've always said there needs to be more helmet they, companies they, so people have options. Yeah. They still That's need huge. help like, they on do. design areas because I'm like, holy shit. You know, like I look like I'm in Tron wearing the helmet I'm on now and I'm like, what the f- yeah, but I'm very particular. I'd rather look like a penis than. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but some people look really cool in certain helmets, and some people. Myself. Everyone's, got a, different, yeah. everyone's yeah. got a different head too, so there needs to be more options. Yeah, so the more the better. The more certified helmets, the better. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a good thing to see all the companies stepping up and figuring it out because it's definitely something that is needed. I mean, I've that day, Stu. We can't. We went to the trails, and like we we're. I think I was there for like two days filming for anthem two and we rode some trails in pittsburgh and he's like just do what you do and i'll get it you know and that's sick he didn't get the can can 360 tire grab or the last one of the 250s and he's like you get that again i'm like yeah no problem man and chase hawk earlier was like yo mikey you want to grab something for tea and i was like yeah just let me get this really quick for Stu, and we'll, we'll go you know mm-hmm. and this was like <laughs> to something their time and all we had was coffee that morning you know and we were riding pretty early we were riding posh at like 9 30 9 9 30 yeah you guys are hyped to be on the east coast well, i get it i mean yeah something but <sighs> i've seen the crash you know personally and it's not it's isn't, not is anywhere. it filmed it's, from the back or is yeah it, pro- it shows yeah. what went wrong in the air which yeah. is what i wanted to know anyways yeah like, what the fuck happened and i'd slip i missed my grip twice and I catch it last second, but that that missing it cost me to be over rotated about not much, like five degrees, and lean forward and to the to the right. So when I hit it, it was just like, yeah. And I mean, Mulligan found me. He said like ten feet from the landing, upside down, just laying there. So, um, yeah, the crash doesn't look like anything though. Like I've had worse crashes, you know. Like yeah, as far as what I what you can see. And even I remember watching it, being like, "Fuck, that's it." How big? How big is that jump? It's like thirty feet. I mean, that's a big fucking jump. Yeah, you're going yeah. fast to too, smack like just right. Yeah. Thirty miles an hour. Probably. You've been you've been through. We rode that on mm-hmm. range of motion, right? Yeah. Thirty feet from the ground up, just it's the biggest jump. Bam. At posh. Yeah. The landing's pretty hard too. I went and knocked on it when I went back to sign some autographs at a shop with. Yeah. Tristan went with me, and we went down to posh and hung <laughs> out for a bit. Had to be a Go little down memory little, lane. Is, yeah. it sur- is it more surreal for you or for her? Um, I think or eerie, both of us. Maybe, I, don't I think know. for her because we went to the hospital and I thank the people for saving my life. And they, dude, when I walked through the doors, they looked like it. I mean, like a ghost was walking in. Yeah, because they didn't think you were gonna I come back as well as you did. Is yeah, that why? yeah. And St. Luke's, and I mean, 
Bethlehem, there's pictures of horse-drawn buggy ambulances in the basement and stuff. It's yeah, pretty... been there for a long time. Yeah. And then I guess, uh, you know, it's crazy because obviously I worked with Keith at that point. And, yeah. And when he came back from the trip, he didn't want to talk about it. You know, yeah, like it, like the you know it was it was traumatic. You know, I think that well, I that's can, that's I a common imagine, statement. Yeah. Is it's more traumatic for for the people that it, I I don't know if I could be on the other side of it yeah. to tell you the truth. Yeah, I'm, we were in Barcelona and Losi told us all we were on a Nike trip that Mikey got hurt and we we're all like he'll be fine. <laughs> that's yeah, what all my family yeah. he'll be said. fine. I didn't like yeah. he'll be fine. Yeah. we were like damn that sucks, but he's fine. <laughs> yeah, no one no. thought that you were actually hurt, it's like funny. real hurt. And then no. a couple weeks later, whatever it was, it was like wait. Yeah, so that and it was three weeks and that was a medically induced coma I'm, three I'm sure. weeks yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, fucking time travel wow. from your point of view yeah i don't you know, know. I not just, many people have done something like that yeah like, i don't was it medically induced i really don't, I don't know i, don't I, know I assume that most of them are these days because you have I so much the, going yeah, on the hospital couldn't take care of me couldn't handle me because yeah. how old it was they yeah. didn't have the right i don't know equipment or know-how or did they move you? Is yeah, that- I got airmedded to I met Murray. Like I was in a I was in a coma for two weeks, I think, in and Bethlehem and then airbedded to week. back to Utah? Yeah. Wow. Whoa. In Murray, like right by my house. Is that, that hospital a hospital was open oh, like a year? Oh sorry. Oh, you're fine. Was that a helicopter or like a jet? How do they get you in a um, coma? You have across to have the a, country. You have to have a doctor on the plane and it's a there's probably special costy, planes or yeah. something. And yeah. it's a so a jet that not have didn't Fo- helicopter. Did but. Fox help pay for that? Um, I think Fox and Rockstar yeah. helped. Shout out to them. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's most people yeah, definitely don't, do not have I the, I was I mean million dollars in ticket. many ways. Like yeah. it was crazy because when I went to my coma, my, my nurses' names were Faith and Hope. <laughs> you know a couple angels yeah yeah and then i mean the sponsors helped help me for a long time even after my injury and i mean fit and odyssey have been there the whole time helping me yeah and fuck it's yeah. just been because really, you are a legend too even being not riding as much as you used to people still gonna buy your shit because of what you did that's that you awesome put a stamp still, in the world i still BMX. love it man like i i go out and ride every once in a while and i wish it was more but it's just the the battles I go through in my head with we were talking about earlier about um, me not finding out for probably five to eight years or something about my brain injury mimicking bipolar and it's been a son of a bitch to figure out and just little things that turn into big things you know because you go through that in your mind anyways but it's just well not knowing not knowing is probably really difficult. You're like, why am I like this? Why is yeah, this happening? The bad thing is, is I'd be so psyched that I wasn't depressed anymore. Yeah. That I'd shoot up through the moon like too happy. Yeah. Right? And I'm, I've been manic. I've, I've gone to Rhode Island Hospital for mania before. I mean, I've, and they thought I was, oh, I OD'd on drugs. Yeah. So they were like, treat me like shit. My wife has PTSD from that place and. You know, getting catheters jammed into me, and <laughs> Jesus, this is uh, this is after this is yeah. this is down the road. This yeah. is five years down the road. Yeah, and then I had an incident at home too, where yeah. it's like, so the mind is really fucking precious, man. You got to yeah. protect that thing as best you and, can because and y- the I, shit sucks. All the bullshit I've kind of had to endure and figure out a way through. I mean, and every brain injury is different, but I mean, all the people you talk to about it too, there's different gnarly things, you know? Yeah, fuck. Is there, and you said somewhere that the, the bruise on your brain was like the size of a thumbprint. Yeah. So this is all, the all of this is. Mine, uh, I've come to find later, but it was the size of a thumbprint bruise on the front lobe, the left frontal lobe of my brain. Mm-hmm. And I had diffused exonals. Which is like the little connections in your brain. Okay. Mine got like twisted. Okay. So that's a bit gnarlier, I guess. And I have pressure on my brain stem. Yeah. So I fractured on my eye five times, crushed my sinuses, um, collapsed the lung, and broke my jaw both sides also. Fuck. Kind of weird. I had 
when I woke up, I had train tracks like from Staples. I'm like, what the fuck? You oh, know? so they were already healed by then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was healed. My my mouth, I couldn't open it. Like I couldn't drink solid liquids or eat solid regular foods for. I mean, the day I got out, I could. Yeah, and I was there, shit, like three weeks, month. I don't know. And but, you had the you had the. Is, it, is yeah, that a feeding tube? Fu- what is yeah. a trach? Is a feeding tube? Or breathing tube. Breathing tube. Yeah. Okay. Fuck, dude. Pretty cool. Not cool. Not <laughs> really I mean, cool, but not cool. You know what I mean? Like, not cool, you had to have one of those, but fuck. Yeah, no, like, it's definitely a lot. Dude, it's crazy to me because I pictured it as breaking my arm, you know, because I've never had a gnarly injury, right? So mm-hmm. I'm like, I got this. Like, I can do it. And I mean, I mean before what, that, what I, he was talking about. I broke my you know? collarbone. Mikey's got this. I broke my know? collarbone when I was a kid, and then I, I separated it when I the gravity games over rotating a seven twenty. I was gonna say you you never really had any injuries. So like I, I was treating them just crazy like ones. a broken arm. You know, I'm like mm-hmm. I can do it, and I was on top of all the the workouts and things like that that I knew of, anyways, because I I didn't have health insurance when I crashed. So that's why but Eddie Buckley and his wife Lori set up those GoFundMe's. Not GoFundMe, it was before them, but like the little online um, places where people could donate, donate you know. Yeah. But they were able to raise a lot of money, which helped me immensely from kids around the world. And, you know, I just want to say thank you to each and every person that helped me because it really, really has helped. And, I mean, it was a lot of shit to take on mentally and emotionally and geez financially (laughs) yeah i think i think in in situations like that like the taking the financial aspect off the table and being able to focus on health and being i couldn't even fathom it at the time because i'm like fuck man i'm not i'm not brad pitt i don't have that (laughs) shit on my nightstand yeah you know right i mean the bill had to be hundred a million dollars afterwards or something (laughs) not 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 that much it was like Oh, not that much. <laughs> it's nine ninety nine. Yeah, it yeah. was enough. Yeah, it was enough to where you're like, holy shit. Yeah, and um, like you said before, we got onto the podcast that we were talking about how like the very beginning of market. I drew the market logo, and it was going to be Rob, Mike Aiken, and me because you were like came to our house. We were all pumped on the mm-hmm. idea, and you were like figuring out the physical part of your injury, and you're riding again, doing your first rails and stuff. Yeah, but then. Like there, you didn't even know the head thing was really yeah the emotion, get you and that took a minute. The emotional and mental part of my my injury has been the hardest for sure. Yeah, I mean, you're you're stuck Your in a labyrinth and you can't figure it out. Except for it's not as cool because David Bowie's not there. You know? like, Fuck <laughs> man, this sucks. <laughs> I literally <laughs> watched that. I watched that movie like two months ago, so that's a solid <laughs> reference for me. Dennis is like, what the fuck? I'm sure it's good. I'm sure it's good. <laughs> it's on Netflix. You can watch it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, what's it called? The Labyrinth? The Labyrinth, yeah. It's I think a I have fucking seen that. I gotta trip. watch that again. <laughs> I gotta watch that again. If you're in that labyrinth, you're fucked up for sure. Yeah, no, it's is that where the roots underneath the bed? No, okay, it's a different weird you know, movie. Yeah. Some, there's Muppets, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a trip of them. You would can't you, even it's so with the bipolar, kid, would you like completely there's like be, high Mikey, but then was it like low Mikey or was it Mikey see, like in a different world that was both, intrusive thoughts and both, all that? Like everything, okay. but I'd see myself on the way up and the way down. You know what I mean? By up, I mean like climbing up the mountain of happiness, whatever, uh-huh. and then see myself on the way down to like the depths of depression. And it just, I could never stay on that middle ground, you know? And you'd be so happy when you're shooting up that you're not depressed. Mm. You're like, holy shit, like things are like happy and, you know, you can be like this. And then, I look at pictures of myself back then even, and I'm, I'm smiling, and I'm like, holy shit, that doesn't even look like me, you know? Because it's like the smile is all crazy and like a little different, and yeah. the eyes are more intense, and I'm just like, fuck. And it you seems very stable now. More so. Yeah. Thank you. But <laughs> yeah, no, you it's, do. it's been a... That's what, that was going to be my question is like what, you know, you said... Our, this coming October is 15 years. Yeah. So it's the, taken some doing on medical, like medicine also. And mm-hmm. then I think, I don't know if a lot of me thought medicine would just help me and I'd be okay. Or 
or what, but a lot of it is figuring it out for yourself too and figuring out how to govern yourself, Mm -hmm. myself anyways. I'm not speaking for other people that have had this happen, but figuring out like how to stay level and, you know, cruise rather than, because you do that in life, right? Like you figure things out, but it's more gradual throughout your life. Mm -hmm. So when it all happens at once, you're just like, it's fucking difficult, you know? insane amount to take on and I'm, because and I'm already sure. are going through the the fact that like we haven't even talked about this on the podcast yet but going from getting to your prime to like you can't do it anymore like that yeah. struggle plus that's the bipolar. that's a big mental Man. struggle for me like not being able to do what i love it's like have always dealt with stress in my life what my happy place what has supported my family what's your outlet my outlet yeah. in life like yeah. so when it it didn't get taken away i could still go pedal but not being able to do it the way i did it really kind of messed with me you know because i'm like fuck i don't even know if i, I want to do it then but I, you know it's it, it took a long time to get past that and that's shitty to say but <sighs> Have you have you been to like actual therapy off of this based on no of this? no no I because I feel like it's like I, I don't know I'm not trying to get like too existential but I feel like it's like almost like a a grieving process of it, like who you it, were it kinda you is. know it so you go is. through you go through denial you go through sadness you go through acceptance you go through those seven stages yeah, you're, you're probably right I tried to see a psychologist yeah but I got the a lot of times I'd wait I would not make the appointments right mm-hmm. and i got the three strikes you're out oh yeah because i missed three times and i yeah. got you're done yeah. so which is, is kind of shitty to, to do to people that are mentally unstable yeah because they want to make money i mean it's understandable because you're costing them money yeah okay. it's just like the almighty dollar ruins yeah. everything dude yeah. You can't even help. People. I'm here to help, but you got to pay me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's unfortunately, I, I, yeah, that's, I, I mean, see both sides. I think, yeah. I think in this, at this point being so long, being so long, uh, far down this road, like you have to see the downsides coming, you know, like when you see, you see this cycle and you're like, Whoa, I need to stop this cycle. That's, yeah, that's I do. I do a little bit. And my wife really helps me, Yeah, but it's still something that it's not as difficult but it's like I'm more just chilling now. I'm not as. This is pretty, I don't know, crazy way to explain it. But I guess I'm just so used to it, you know, that I'm just like okay with it now. Yeah. When before my life was damn exciting, you know. Yeah. I traveled all over. I got to ride with different people from all over the country, world, and then you know, to nothing. It just becomes. At first, I think I just got more depressed because of that. And when I saw things going back up, I kind of had high hopes and it'd shoot through the moon, you know? Yeah. So, but now I'm just kind of you more level, I guess, used to things being more normal, more mellow, you know? Because our lives, yeah. being a professional bike rider or whatever you want to call it, I mean... You, pretty damn exciting compared to you know your normal average joe yeah. and at the time i was like i don't know what you're talking about because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. your life was normal to you yeah yeah, yeah. exactly as a young kid i mean it's fun i think i don't know if you remember but uh vic murphy and i oh yeah stayed. i remember okay. and we watched profile uh, uh props like euro tour and there was that event over there and and i was and you guys had just gotten the video we're watching it on the couch and and Aiken's in the video and he's just doing the most fuck shit and just, <laughs> just being like so geeked out and like and just thinking like little think, thinking that you were unapproachable in so many different ways but you're like, on a trip with Vic Murphy that's yeah but like Vic was always Vic to me you <laughs> yeah, know what yeah, I mean yeah. like like, it, like but like fuzz was that guy to me exactly you know? yeah so yeah. but it, for me it, you had to it's got to be so fucking hard because you had people treat you a certain way beforehand. You and definitely, certain way, they treat you different way, differently than afterwards. And it's like, you have all these other things happening. It's got to yeah, be fucking, definitely find out who your real friends are when yeah. something like that happens, you know? Yeah. And it's, I mean, I don't know if it's real friends or just friends that I, don't know, I guess will be there for you, you know? Cause there's friends that are genuine and still 
can't be there as much, but yeah, it definitely like, you know, like lets you know. Yeah. I think it's uh, certain people are better at dealing with stuff like that than yeah, others. They people, care, they care, but they're so people deal with it in fucking, different ways. Yeah. It's yeah. so yeah. gnarly. Yeah. Like some I, people I, are givers and some people yeah. don't know how to do that, but they still love And then you. they run away. I feel like I'm a That's runaway. True. I'm a runaway. Yeah. Like everyone's I, different. I, I, yeah. I freak out about it. So yeah. For someone in your shoes, you got to really see the people around you. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Changed. It was crazy. I um, let me see what else I got in here. Let's talk about Nora Cup because that was that was a quick one after. That was literally a year yeah. afterwards, right? And that, was, that was really unexpected, and I mean, honestly, probably one of the highlights of my time my riding. You know, yeah. was actually being called out for the nomination yeah. and then going to it. And then I, went with, I brought my brother, David, and I mean, kids were chanting my name, like, Hey, I, good. I and it, it right was here. like, so surreal. You know, I was like, this gives me so much. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't do you dirty and put the whole speech in here, but cause I, I ramble on about, no, nothing. you don't at all. It was fucking perfect. So this was only a year after the injury. Yeah. yeah. If you look at my right side, you can fully tell. Like, yeah. I I have pictures. Uh, How did you feel at this point? But the the chant like of mentally. Aiken. I want to hear the I want to hear the chant of. Okay. <laughs> yeah, dude. Is. Yeah, it's pretty surreal, man. I think uh, he is the most respected BMX rider yeah. of all time. One of them. Yeah. Can't, I can't, you know, my generation, because there's Mira and Jay Mira, and that was a little bit yeah. before me. But my generation. Thanks, I, Yeah, people can't respect you. I enough. definitely, I mean, I love BMX. Like, the people, everything about it. I mean, just the life, the, I guess it is the lifestyle, but just grabbing your bike it's free just going and cruising you know it's how i my mom got cancer when i was a kid so it's how i dealt with all of that mm -hmm. so like it it's taken a lot to kind of deal with problems in different ways you know because it was always i just fucking took it out on my bike you Dude, know that's what's yeah. so crazy yeah. about what you went through because i i know what you're saying it's like if anything's wrong and you're healthy you go ride and everything's fine it's the craziest, easiest, simplest thing for BMXers, mm -hmm. but you go scare, going, you go scare yourself, yeah, get some whatever. aggression you out, come home, like, conquer oh, it, yeah, you feel, know? feel yeah. accomplished, yeah. like that whole yeah, thing. They deliver everything. But Cheap. going through the hardest thing in your life and not being able to go, be it's, Mike Aiken on the bike. It's been fucking difficult, you know. Like I don't wish it on anyone. It's yeah. it's it's taught me a lot though. Like I've learned a lot about life and just you know real life lessons rather than just having fun you know because mm -hmm. you don't really learn when things are fun but when they're hard you kind of think about how you can avoid it you know mm -hmm. so is but, uh like physically is your body better now than it was 10 years ago oh yeah so like, is there still i'm finally purpose? feeling like at that i posted a, a clip of me a, a tanner in the fall mm -hmm. and then like now I can, I feel like I can actually ride and, um, gauge what I'm doing. You mm -hmm. know, when before I was just like, fuck it, I'll ride this with one side of my body working, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, cause I'm yeah. stubborn, man. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> I got sent dude, down at the trails and everywhere. So I think a lot of scared, a lot of people. You tried to ride in dreamline. Yeah. Like I, what? that's what I'm yeah, saying. He, tried, he went to Dreamline and tried riding the biggest line ever, ever. And which one? The, the big one. The, the, one? the biggest one. He <laughs> got worked, right? I jumped off on that big one. The, the, yeah. Holy shit. Why yeah. do I not remember this? Dude, it was like I wasn't there men mentally. I just fucking wanted to be back to where I was yeah. so bad. Was I that like on the high fucking, where you're like, I'm getting there. I'm going to just ride yeah. Dreamline. And I mean, through a lot of it, like I've, been i don't know like my mind's there but my body's not yeah so i'm just yeah. like dude i got this you know yeah 
Yeah, just so pissed in a way, I probably. I don't I, know that it's pissed, just fucking wanting it. Yeah, back. not pissed. Just yeah. like, you, almost like trying to break through like what you know. Break through the barriers yeah, or something. Yeah, not pissed. Just like, like my nerves and stuff, the one side of my body, it takes a long time for your nerves to even heal. And they just, I mean, I couldn't even feel a lot of my body, but I was just like, fuck it, dude. I, I can, do, I remember. Like I can do this, yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean that's so <laughs> sick. it's so sick yeah, in terms no, it's of so sick, you know yeah. literally. Pissed was like, not God. the right word, but like, like yeah. I, no, like you're just like stubborn. Yeah, yeah stubborn. Like I got this. <laughs> Whatever the word is for that. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, fuck like, this. Like I'm, <laughs> like, I'm gonna back. get through this line. It's gonna. I'm remember, gonna be back. Yeah. But I remember like, Chase Chase Hawk always saying like, I don't know if I read it or heard it or something like, and it came from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Him saying that you're right. It's crazy because you look so pissed. Yeah. And then it's like not, you know, it's yeah, like yeah. St- style, whatever. And I'm yeah. like thinking about it and I'm like, why is that? And I'm like, oh, because I do what we're saying about taking out your writing on your, like just pedaling towards something like, like motherfucker, today suck. I'm going to, yeah, you yeah. Know, blast yeah. this yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Letting the aggression. I can relate. Yeah. I can relate, dude. I oh, was yeah. an, I was an aggressive little kid too, and I like didn't mind. I liked the battle scars. I liked the. Yeah. I liked the. Ba- I liked the process of it. You know, no, it was like, kind of the whole square one up in arms era was just, you know, being pissed, <laughs> but having so pissed it makes you smile. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right, right. After you release all the anger, what's yeah. left? Smiles. Um, and then mentally, 10 years ago, you know, like, I think we basically, we discussed that, but like, it, I, you feel sharper these days. And yeah, all that stuff I feel, too. I feel sharper. My, it's kind of shitty because my, I feel like better yeah. on a bike and stuff, but th- now my shoulders popped out probably over 20 times. Yeah, so now my body is just like, fuck. Getting old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I got it. I'm getting shoulder surgery, like beginning of March. Is it your labrum? whatever yeah. that's some french word <laughs> <laughs> i gotta get bone graft oh really yeah so they take a piece of your bone from your shoulder and then put two screws in it and you lose a little bit of range but did my shit pops out sleeping and is that mine did too it, it is that does on the way to i the did it once on the way up here we just popped out in vegas i'm sleeping i wake up with my arm above my head then the muscles trigger yeah my shoulder pops out and i'm stuck there like yeah Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Owen. Owen. I got a funny story. <laughs> well, it popped out once snowboarding with Owen too. Oh, really? Yeah. He he had to help me up and out of it. And the funniest story about it popping out was I was in the Trans Am in the car wash, and I reached back to <laughs> to block the the water from co- spraying in the t tops. Yeah. And my shoulder <laughs> fucking pops out. I'm like, oh my. God. <laughs> Sat through the whole car wash with my shoulder out. And then, like, it was in the beginning stages of it popping out. I hadn't figured out how to get back in. So I'm, like, in the parking lot doing all this, like, fucking stretches, look-alike looking things and (laughs) trying to get it to go back in. And I drove myself to the Instacare place with it out. And I was waiting in line. I'm like, excuse me, ma'am. I don't mean to be rude, but my shoulder's out. Can I? And she's like, we don't do that here. I'm like, man. <laughs> so this nice woman had to help me out, like into the car to open my door, the door to the building and to my car because it's heavy, right? And then I drove to the ER, waited there for 45 minutes. Tristan and it's met painful me there. When it's oh, out, dude, right? it sucks. Yeah. yeah, not the whole time, but you're definitely like, yeah, it makes you in a weird survival feeling. Yeah, like, dude. like yeah. your shit is so your, weird. Your temperature drops all night. Yeah, you go to like, survival. Just like. It, it's not fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I ended up at the ER and waited there for 45 minutes and the lady's trying to grind it back into place. And like, she's like, this is the third time. She's like, okay, hey, if it doesn't go back in this time, we're putting you under. I'm like, you're not doing that shit to me because yeah. I'm not going to be out with you grinding my shoulder back in. <laughs> so I said a little baby prayer in my head, dude, and I popped right back in. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but Yeah. And that is, that's not related to that's no other that's shoulder. just yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. wear and tear fuck <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm get, thing is a, I just want to get everything fixed so the next century of writing and living yeah will be a good one because I mean the century has gone by and I'm like fuck feels that way right yeah <laughs> yeah. Um, Can I get a little exercise on them? That really helped yeah, me because I've had terrible shoulder shit. Popped it out snowboarding. Yeah. Popped it out of my sleep. Ooh, I have a story about trying to do that. Even <laughs> what? 
exercise, oh. lifting weights above my head. You no. got to be careful though, because like with the, you probably have no labrum or it's torn, and like like I can't lift this shoulder up past here. Yeah, that's just how I live, you know. But this I, one's boom. I can lift it up. It's just when I lift it back too far or forward. So like, uh, oh, yeah. So which way does it pop out? Forward. Mm, that's dip. Yeah, it's probably yeah. the rotator cuffs torn. Mm. Who knows, dude? Some French Shit. word that I looked it up because I had to call back and have the lady tell me, and she. Told me again. <laughs> huh. It's because the doctor, the the doctor surgery was French, fixes it, then you can work it out a bit. And I, it, I know. Yeah. Just your, a little workout. Your croissant's torn. You got your croissant yeah. torn? Yeah. <laughs> Let's phone Matthias. <laughs> He'll know in a second. Um, I'm going to go pee real quick. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to cycle back. Right. So mosh to fit. Yeah. Oh, so oh, oh. you're good. Uh, fit. Uh, you're on mosh for what, a year? A year. And then, uh, and then, so that I'm sure they paid pretty well. Mosh is owned by by who? Giant. Giant. Okay, yeah. so that was their that was their I mountain. I, yeah, I got like uh, five hundred bucks a month. I think. Oh, that's not as yeah. I feel feel like. It well, I was a, I was like yeah. a new guy. You yeah, know? I, I was guess. like the young little up and comer dude. Okay, and then fit comes along, and you were. Literally in the beginning, it was like before it was a brand. Yeah, I I got f- on fit from a postcard in the mail that was a picture of Robbo doing an unturned down. And <laughs> Robbo called me and he was like, hey, we're doing this thing. Moeller's back in it. Do you want to be a part of it? Yeah. And, you know, I was like, hands down. Yeah. Quick you know? yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I looked up to Robbo and stuff and I always watched him riding trails, but a lot of it had to do with Moeller. I remember we coming to California with Moeller or with Behringer and we went to S and M where it's at now and like it was dude, my forks were so bent, mm-hmm. like bad. Like I bent them back a bunch, you know. Like <laughs> they, they were sketchy. And uh I'd I'd just gotten the rest of my money for the way home and I was like gonna buy some forks off Moeller, you know. And he'd said to me, he's like, Man, just run the sticker. Yeah. You know, and yeah, that's even sick. back like back then, being a kid that didn't grow up with much money, and you know, having it be everything, get home, and just, <laughs> yeah, that meant a lot to me. So Hell like, yeah, fuck yeah. And then, um, so it was obviously you, Van, BF, Edwin. Who's a, who's no, the it, opener? Who's the opening? Van wasn't even on yet. Oh, okay. it was me, Nate Hansen, uh, Robbo, and BF. Oh wow, very yeah. very early. That's crazy because like, I don't even think of I don't even think of Nate being part yeah, of the were, opening. He designed yeah. most of the stuff yeah. in the beginning. I I believe. I mean, I could be wrong because I wasn't in the background of everything. No, but, that's probably correct. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Van got on later when the Schwinn deal stopped. Oh yeah. And okay. I think Edwin came on a little like fairly fairly soon. You know, or was it? I don't remember. We're talking early fit days? Yeah, early fit days, yeah. I don't remember seeing Edwin on the, the little poster thing. Poster yeah. thing that they made. What so. uh it's funny, I always think of that. He's a big deal of the brand though, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Um I always think of like the early fit days, I think of you, Van, BF, and Edwin. Those are yeah. the, the, yeah. the 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 ones the that Barcelona I think of. Trip. That those mm-hmm. are the air, those are the arrows that are being pointed. Yeah. You know, was, logo right there. Each okay. of you guys in each corner. Who else was on the Barcelona trip? Cause I feel like yeah, that's right. Those um, were like the Van, dudes. Vicky Alla Vic uh, came on. He was so it. sick. And then uh, I know Wiz filmed it right because he had some clips. No, the, he filmed uh, Puerto Rico. Oh him and, yeah, him and Sherbo. But Wiz had clips riding the the mini ramp, that crazy vent mini ramp that was there when you guys went. I swear, Did he go? I, I do. Remember. I remember those clips, but I don't know. If Maybe. My memory shot. Dude. No, you're good. <laughs> Lived yeah. a lot of life in those years. It's it's definitely. I don't think Let's he see. he was there. Because he was on S and M, right? At the I don't time? think back then. Hmm. I think this was before. Dang, I, I just feel like I remember him doing like a one eighty look back to disaster, something sick. Oh, it's a long video. But. Yeah, it's long. Maybe he went after you guys or something. All right, Oscar Blues. I'm trying one of these out. Co- coffee and the Oscar Blue American. I've had one of these. We Chris got Edwin, by them. Aiken, Foster, Vic, Justin Inman, Van. Oh yeah, Inman. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Oscar Blues. Oui, first. Oh, Inman, yes, yeah. dude. This team was so sick. On there. And you guys were like the first ones to make people realize that Barcelona is just like... Yeah, it was early on. The yeah. best place in the world to go ride street. And oh, there's so many spots that aren't there anymore even. Robbo knew, like, because mm. the whole skate world mm. and everything kind of kept track of it all. But 
Um, so sad. And I mean, BF thought we were going and riding trails and tranny and park. Like, <laughs> we get there and we're like, what the fuck's a tranny? <laughs> but that, that fucking city is a skate park. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah, I've never been so sore in my life except for like, you know, the days in Barcelona because you're riding from spot to spot. You're riding every spot. It's your body just feels like it's going to fall apart. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, Why is it so good? Why can't every city be Barcelona? Right. <laughs> uh, the Road Fools 2. I always think of the, the clip where he's like, oh, that kid is sick. Yeah. I, I could just I can. I remember being my parents saying that to me that he said that and seeing it and being like, holy shit. Yeah. I always think it's just foreshadowing, you well, know, like who said like that? in Road Fools Two, mm-hmm. uh, they're at, they're at Fuzzy's house, yeah. and then it and then it's like you doing a turn down, I think, right? I don't, yeah, something, yeah. nope, a can, I think, something I where you probably, like can tell it's aching, uh, yeah. Even back then, that's where my question about like how did you get your influence? Because even back then, you could see at his own style. A lot of a lot of it was like I really watched Stoffer and mm-hmm. I watched yeah. Ground Chuck yeah. and Wingding and all the dudes doing Dude, trains sick and style. Bennett even like all this all the stuff he did trick wise I loved oh, shit. it this is kind of cool it's like a I don't know if this is and <laughs> <laughs> Bennett was one of those guys who had a really good style with every trick he oh, did yeah, too Bennett. and he didn't like do all the crazy contest it's... tricks as much yes well yeah. oh that's right that was me in Road Street and Park and Dirt yeah, he's he's definitely always been a dude. And plus, then when you meet him, just have, loves to have fun. He's so cool. <laughs> um, so those early fit days, what what was it like? Like it had to be kind of a, a cool era to be a part of, like that merging brand, and it's like close. It quickly becomes like one one of, if not the largest brand in BMX. Fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, to be a part of it, you definitely felt. I felt proud and. Um, like as part of something that was going to make a difference, you know, and hopefully steer BMX in the right direction at the time. And, yeah. um, I just felt good knowing that also Moeller had its back, you know, and he'd done S and M and figured everything out with that. And you just kind of, I felt like secured, you know? Yeah. And it's weird because going from giant, you know, to Mosh, you'd feel that way too, but it was more of like, um, and Mosh, like I, Heath Penner is like my dude. He was always acted like my big brother, you know. I love that guy, and going from them, like it was like a family. But then going to Fit, it was kind of like starting something new, a fresh thing. It was gonna building. It felt it, like it was gonna do something, you know. Mm-hmm. And. uh I mean, Moeller still supports you today, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that, I found that really, I mean, honestly, like I talked to Moeller before we did this podcast and, and I honestly found that really surprising that it's like still, you still get a check from Fit yeah. today. And that yeah. is like, to me, that is, that's Odyssey that's too. Odyssey oh, really? That's, never, that's, I mean, Odyssey they've too. fully been, have my back from day one. That's amazing. But if you're a company who can, yeah. it's so legit because yeah. people want to still buy mikey tires and any signature yeah, product yeah. because of what you've done you're not like you know you can hold on to somebody just like being friends but like even as a business standpoint it's like yeah good move i'm <laughs> it's i not, mean it's not dumb and i it's bought cool. the i bought i don't know if you saw it on the way I, in but i i bought that i actually bought that I awesome like, man I'm like i'm buying I bought the what? little I the, the, the night wolf night, mm. uh, handlebar pad i try and tell every yeah. kid on online to instagram that i appreciate it you yeah. know because it really does help me yeah like live i mean i now I'm on disability in Utah and, you know, make a, b- a little bit from writing and it all helps to yeah. us to even be able to live. So it's definitely a huge thing for me. And it's kind of like everything is lined up for for the greater good of what's happening now, you know, because before I, I just made decisions quickly and, you know, they all worked out to where now it's like I'm still kind of reaping the benefits of it and had i thought about that back then i would have been like well i mean oh. bmx is still <laughs> reaping the benefits of you because even everything you've given bmx and then the the influence that you've had on the next generation that we already <laughs> talked about the chases the Aiken, or the the chases the the nathans the dax like those Thanks, man. Every, every sing every single one of those dudes would be like Aiken, you know like that's, quick quick so that's cool uh, to hear because i definitely I see those guys riding them. 
baffled, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I, I guess I, that, that does roll us into the kind of the signature part stuff is like, where, like, where did the night wolf, the name come from and where um, did the logo come from? It's funny because wolves was just a group of friends in, in Salt Lake, you know, Jordan Utley who made that's it yeah. kind of was like, and Killjoy, right? Did yeah. You? And Killjoy. Yeah. Um, my group, little group of friends, John Anderson and, uh, there was him and then our, our friend, our other friend, we were all the wolves and John was lone wolf. Jordan called himself struggle wolf because everything was a struggle. <laughs> Jordan's <laughs> the best dude. I miss, I miss, I, <laughs> I really Wolf, did. Right? I really did like him. He was yeah, such he takes a cool photos, dude. Only cool dudes in your Salt Lake right right area. Now. Yeah. He takes photos now and they're really good. Oh yeah. He has, he's part of a, a dude that made a book and stuff. And he was from the snow industry too, right? Um, yeah, I guess he like made that. snowboard videos no. and stuff too. I don't know if he made videos, but he's def we've always went snowboarding oh, okay. and kind of that. He's in with the the scene as dudes up there, but yeah, Jordan rules, man. I shout out to him. Yeah, yeah. It, he. We just called ourselves the wolf. They called me Night Wolf because I just didn't sleep. <laughs> you know, like I'd be up all night just doing random stuff and going to bed, or I don't know. <laughs> but and then the logo kind of came feel you from that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the logo came from actually Rich Hirsch was the first dude to kind of do that logo. Okay, he yeah. did that the that's on the seat. Mm -hmm. It was a shirt, a low tech shirt. Mm -hmm. So just literally he just did was a revisions? Like did he just show it to you I one would, day and you're like, damn, that's sick? Yeah. I he's think, so talented with that shit. Yeah, so the Night Wolf logo has like that's kind of just turned into your logo at a point. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I guess so. Um But it's just a group of friends who said I think he Is said it? we're we're like uh George, what did he say? He said we're all like sheep in wolves clothing. Because we're nice dudes, but we like to look like a bunch of hard asses. Or <laughs> Is that and then you had the and then Behringer had the Cobras, wasn't that the running yeah, joke? I was in the Cobras first, you know. Like, well, wasn't it Cobras versus yeah, Wolves or something just like that? Joking around one yeah. day, I'm sure when they were wasted or something. <laughs> <laughs> Behringer's so funny. I remember them like drinks, ta there'd be like tags. Oh the my best. god, always. He's the best, I remember dude. seeing like tags somewhere like Cobras eat wolves or something yeah. like that. Like, if you're ever bored and you just go to. Behringer's house, you just be entertained for like six hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'll never, it'll just keep entertaining Step you. Step in his garage and there's. Yeah, like, exactly. He's so funny. Yeah. Uh, um, I miss him, man. I used to come out to Salt Lake a lot. Yeah, it's definitely still, that area. Still riding, doing the same stuff. And yeah. Building stuff out. His, his new yard's rad, too. Mm -hmm. I've been there a while ago. It's fun. <laughs> um, And then you had, you had like, I mean, the, the Aiken series stuff with Fit. And then you have like the diamond pattern seats, you have the night wolf stuff, the fit and I mean the Aiken tires. Like there's so many things that I think are like Quintus. I can I can picture them all. Like it, am I wrong with that? Where it's like like they all have like this look and this feel and they've all like Dude, done I ran their the part. Aiken tire pretty much the whole time I was on demolition. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to cross off Odyssey, you know. Yeah, it's like that's <laughs> funny. Like it, that's how good that tire was. It was like I ran all demolition stuff. I was like can't, not awesome. taking the front ache tire off. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. one That's was awesome. on there. The, the yeah, same. seat, the seat, man. I always wanted the the old school diamond seat. Mm -hmm. It was always in our grocery store, Harmons, by my house. I'd always walk through and then had these shitty, heavy guts underneath it. So I'm like, fuck, can't run that. Yeah, you know. And right when, I mean, Bauer asked me what I wanted to make. You know, I was like, I want to do a seat, and we kind of worked it with the tire together getting them because i always ran tioga comp threes before eyes on odyssey mm -hmm. and we just kind of figured out what we could make that would be you know equivalent or better hopefully i mean i think it's better than the comp three mm -hmm. so we kind of went with that with the dirt tire and i always ran a dirt up front and i still do but dirt in the front and straight in the back yep. yeah yeah and they were wide too right yeah it was, it's funny because back then it was before things started to get really wide mm -hmm. and i i wanted a 2.25 front tire like the knobby and he's like that we we can't do that it's like a little bit you know won't, it won't sell big. pretty yeah. much like it's not time yet and i was like i don't know if i can run 2.1 that's yeah. like, <laughs> sounds so crazy now, now people yeah. are on 2.4 yeah <laughs> i feel like nuts. now they just say 2.5 even though they're like yeah. 2.3 though so yeah tire sizing's funny <laughs> 
Now that <laughs> then they have those tubes now that are like the tube Lidos. Yeah, the, oh, yeah. The, the light tubes that you're yeah. talking about. They're not you. The orange they're ones. They're like bigger and um, Odyssey makes tubes that you like. The pressure is different when you put them in the air in them. So you, you, they're for like landing flat, I guess. Dude, like, is that what oh, it really? is? Because I. Because I got yeah. the new Odyssey tires, those uh, super sick ones, the light ones, you know? Super circuit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super circuit, yeah. yeah. And then the the Odyssey tubes, I swear to God, like, I have it's suspension. It's right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like suspension. It's, it's for, insane. like, landing off high stuff on it. And I'm like, it's shit, fucking I wish I would have had these yeah. When I was trying that 180, that got broke. <laughs> no, dude, yeah. like Because I think that they even put, like... It is a super nerdy, like but they put like a hundred percent rubber in them, and a lot of tires had a ton of plastic in them. Mm-hmm. Like they're cheaper with the plastic, so it's not like everyone thinks they're all rubber, but it's like a shitload of plastic. That's why your landing and, just in the super circuits. The super circuits are like high end. Oh rubber. yeah, but the, but you're talking about the. But tubes pretty are... much any other tire is like has a t- ton of plastic in it. That's why oh, these yeah. super circuits, they're not even meant. They're gonna be pissed because they're not supposed to be for riding street, but like. It's like a fucking secret weapon. Like yeah, these yeah. Super they feel riding crazy. Street. What are they for? Racing? No, they're for like their transition tire and racing oh. and park. But they even told me they're like, Dude. can you not ride these on street? Because we but racing they're the best street tire too. Even Sorry, ra- yeah. even racing. The one that got me off your tire finally no, <laughs> after twenty years. <laughs> racing is different now. I show up to re- the racetrack with a knobby on, and they look at me like an idiot. Yeah, they're yeah. Like, they don't have knobs. That's going to make you go slower. Uh-huh. I'm like. My knobby will kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone they, just slides out. No, now? they use those. I. It's like the micro. Stuff, I guess all the know? berms are asphalt. So it doesn't really yeah. matter. It's crazy. The dirt's yeah. hardly. The dirt's hardly dirt. You know, Dude, they use that soil it's tax. Okay. It's that soil yeah, tax yeah. stuff. I it's just, glue. So different to me. I'm yeah. Like, Dude, knobby's dirt. Like. Yeah. <laughs> you, all, you all changed. I stayed the same. Yeah, we need to get a uh, racer on the podcast. We talk about Nick, racing Nick so Long. much. Nick, Nick Long would be sick. I love Nick. Yeah, because yeah, we talk about racing so much, and we're so ignorant to racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are <laughs> you guys were talking about that clock thing, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, no idea. Yeah, that I know. Was, that racing, was the, like mid '90s. Yeah, yeah I was gonna yeah. say late '90s is like the racing I know about. '94, '95. I got those clocks. Um, I kind of want to. Let's. There's a lot to talk about with Anthem Two. But I, I don't. Let's just w- let's watch Anthem two. But before we talk about kind of this the stuff in between, I want to talk about the style because I feel like <laughs> he's like I don't want to talk about my style anymore. I know, God but I am, <laughs> dude. I just feel like there. You had a quote somewhere that said like it's all about the nosedive, and I feel like That's when you a see copy that, of a quote, is I've, it? Yeah, I've heard that somewhere. But like when you do a trick. What do you mean it's all about the nose dive? Watch. Throw the front I'm, I'm, down yeah. Everything? I'm going to... There's a lot... There's a huge oh, sequence so of them. See that? Like I do off everything? I took <laughs> it to heart. Nose dive. But see that right there. Yeah. See, it was the... I mean, that was a 360 can-can tire grab too. But like... And there's a there's a bunch of examples well, of it. Well, it is but after, throwing the front end down is gnarly. It just always watch, feels better. There's that little tuck it looks after better. everything. It feels better, but it's gnarly. You catch all the pump on stuff when you nose into mm-hmm. it. That's why we always would say it and do it is because I think we heard on a props, one of the East Coast guys says it's all about the nose dive. Yeah. Didn't and you get to us? Uh, it kind of was. Because, every single, damn it. like after every single combination, there's this there it is. very small little tuck. You see that? All time. They're going to show it again. Uh, that was even he doesn't nothing at the area 51 and yeah and then it, there's a small tuck poof, that little nose dive at the very end i feel like just like <laughs> it just it's so subtle and it's like if you if you start to watch like all the clips you're like that's the, that's that, the fucking difference oh see it was 360 and then poof, dude yeah it's it just something had, I, we always tried to do is the racer bmx kids we always just tried to catch all the tranny on the landings mm-hmm. and pump the shit out of it you know and that's the thing with racing that goes so far because like that's something like skate park kids don't have and a session doing you know i'm gonna we'll, catch all the tranny we'll ride the, K- might, but. the ktr indoor park a lot now not a lot but i go sometimes and i see kids and they they don't pump the lip you know yeah. like the bottom of it, of it and they just let it send them i'm like dude just pump the bottom of the lip and you're over it, mm-hmm. you know? Like, you just got to, like... That's an old clip, huh? Kids, like yeah. So, these that was, are, so there's something funny here, is I didn't realize this until I watched this, uh, until I watched this uh, earlier earlier today, is that right at this spot, right there. That's me ducking, down, ducking really? down on the ground, <laughs> holding the camera, not shooting a photo of you. What are you doing? 
Uh, probably shooting a photo of somebody else doing something. You're but, vlogging. Yeah, I was vlogging. <laughs> I was vlogging. This, this so that was a vlog. coalition trip. Yeah, it this was a coalition photo. trip. He was filming stuff for a coalition. Yeah, uh. Stu was. And I and I and I'm convinced, and Stu couldn't remember, but this is the trip that he asked you to film a part for Anthem because I I remember we were at the so. campus and he was like. He was like, I'm gonna ask him to film a video <laughs> part, and I and but I didn't really know since I was wet since I was West Coast, I was nowhere fast, and I didn't really grow up on Anthem. Yeah, and so I honestly Same. didn't really know Anthem all that well. I watched the crazy thing Ooh, about he's gonna make nowhere fast too. Being in, yeah, in right, Anthem you know too was I watched Anthem every day, yeah, pretty much at least a section in it every day before I went to the trails to get stoked. That's like know? nowhere fast for us. I feel like so, <laughs> your guys. yeah. Well, like, you're not East Coast. You're in the middle. No, I yeah. just. Grew up looking up to all those dudes. Yeah. So um, that's where that came from. And then, I mean, we watched, I watched a lot of Stu's videos growing up, like, um, and the push videos, push tweakers and, you know. Yeah. Other, but. Yeah, I never saw any of that stuff. And so until way later. I like, asked Stu if he had any questions. So and the only sick. thing he, he asked was, he said, ask Mikey if he thought the video was ever going to happen. Because it was like <laughs> the distant, the time between this clip, or it wasn't when they actually started filming, it was like four years or something. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I didn't really think about it much. Time went by so fast. I remember at one point wondering a little bit, but I ne was never really like hit my mind that it wasn't going to happen, yeah. you know? It's just when you're traveling all over, doing so many things. Didn't you film this in only a couple trips too? Because the yeah. injury happened like He's, way. That's why these these clips are in it because he scooped them up. Yeah, he found them. And this is Fuzz's old setup, right? Yeah, yeah. But so how, how long did you? How many trips did you actually go on? He for came out to part? Salt Lake for like a weekend or something, and that's where like the ninth to ninth clips are, the cement park, and the hop over the fence. Yeah. yeah. And now I remember seeing that that foot plant to 180 into the bowl. I was like, that is yeah. fucking insane. That was I'd a never seen just anything fucking that. foot yeah, planting yeah. the spine is like a thing of beauty. <laughs> yeah, like where everyone else foot planted spine, it's like, oh, you messed up. Yeah. you didn't even get and over these, it. And this is Leighton, right? Yeah, I remember watching you here and just being like, what the this fuck, was, dude? This was when he came out too, and this was. Uh, <sighs> oh, there it is. That's what I was talking about. It's just that small tuck yeah, we at the end. So, so sorry, you Area 51 we went to and on the way from PA. Those are dope trails to get tricks done, yeah. though. They were like perfect trick yeah, trails. Yeah, they recently got plowed, too. Did they? But yeah. Wow. And then we went to... Uh, we were only in Pittsburgh. Sesney was actually... flew out with me. We went to Area 51. And that also... But we went to... What the hell was the trails called in Pittsburgh? Um, mm. Monroeville. Monroeville. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you did a was weekend in Salt Lake. Posh and then, a couple of days. So like probably. Dude, that hat is so sick, I must say. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, all they can clones have a, had that hat too. I have a dark blue, a dark red one now. Oh, I still yeah. got that one too, but it's hard for me to wear it after. So this was just a weekend in Salt Lake and a was trail trip. That? Yeah. We were Dude. Supposed, I was supposed to go That's on insane. like a bunch of European trips. Yeah. But I obviously had different plans <laughs> <laughs> still one of the sickest video parts yeah. ever and like, you said this is your the, you, this is the section you like the most huh yeah well i like them all for people always ask me which one's my favorite elf showed me that yeah that's sick and <sighs> which one i like the, the most now is just say uh, it's how i feel but i like them all for different reasons you know they kind of follow a storyline in my yeah. writing life and kind of you know, you remember things from back then and the way you looked at things. And I was kind of getting back more into riding trails and my roots and things like that. And I just felt more, I don't know, at home. And it's cool, too, that I have the, that just to remind me, you know, that's where I was at, the pinnacle of my riding. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's cool. That's a that's a good way to look at it too. Because yeah, I I feel like a lot of people would be like it's unfinished, you know, like that type yeah, of thing, I, you know. But yeah, I used I spent I spent some time looking at things negatively a little bit, and my wife's like my she's honestly been the hugest uh, blessing in my whole injury for me. Is she's like you can either look at it and we can laugh about it or we can cry about it. Yeah, you know. So needless to say, we spent a lot of time laughing. Cause I do some funny shit all the time. And that's just like, they told me when I got out of the hospital, it's going to speed up the aging process of like, you know, forgetfulness and your mind yeah. going, 
to different places and things and not, I mean, I forget stuff all the time, you know, yeah. and it's had to, it's tested my patience so much, but you know, what choice do you have, but you keep going forward. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's definitely, definitely been good that she's, she's been by my side, helping me Hell out. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and have a good partner throughout yeah. all this and someone that's willing to go through the ride with you. That's so awesome. Yeah. I see kids go through it now and I'm just like, man, you know, you feel for him because it's, you know, <laughs> what what's ahead of him a little bit. And it's just like, motherfucker, yeah. you know, is there a, uh, is there part of you that like wants to like work with people or anything in that yeah, capacity? I'd, lo- I'd love to help people any way I can. I've always loved helping people out, even just, I mean, I'd love to even talking to kids about riding and helping them out that way, mm-hmm. you know, because I know when you're riding like we have a long time, you learn a lot of shortcuts to tricks that you've had to learn the hard way, you know? Mm-hmm. So a lot of things I watch kids ride, and I'm like, oh, I just need to do this, you know? Yeah, you can almost get <laughs> clinics. Yeah, but... Dude, I mean, getting like... Yeah. I, anytime I go to KTR or any place, I always talk to kids and help them out. I'm like, hey, man, I don't want to come across rude, but if you try this out, I think I'll, you know, you'll be able to click it a little better. Yeah. And help, this might help, you know? Hell yeah. Um, should we, yeah. I, w- I want to circle back again. Circling. Circling. Um, let me find my bearings. So fit for what? Six years, seven years before the fall. Like you're, Oh, um, um, 2008. So, so eight years, eight years. Yeah. So there was a time period, uh, where Mira asked you to ride from Mexico. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What uh? So the quote the that was on the the Mira co- the sentence to life trips sentence to life yeah, yeah so Mira was obviously a big fan I would assume As a, I mean I'm still a big fan you know yeah. it's just the way things were done that I mean and obviously you know that it's gonna go a different route than say S and M yeah. would go you know so it's not gonna be as there's not gonna be as much attention to detail and I kind of knew yeah. that you know. Well, where where was the first time you met Mira? Like, where was the first time you remember like being like on a deck with Mira? I don't remember ever, dude. I'm not doing some vert. That's that's too. Crazy. No, I know. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, where would you where would you bump into Mira? Uh, where, I feel like you a, guys probably rode. Park. Ru- I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking Roots Jam. Yeah, that's, is, yeah, that's my Roots. Thought. Yeah, that was so sick. Yeah. Mira would go to Roots Jam and yeah. Metro Jam, dude. Just, I like, remember once in a while. Yeah, I went to the metros too. So probably there. You're probably right. Okay. And uh, I mean, I was I was definitely really shy when I first came into BMX. I just wouldn't talk, you know. I just listen. Yeah, so that's what, that too, that's goes back to what I was saying: is you were quiet. intimidating. The, everyone <laughs> to thought, me, everyone <laughs> to me, that, yeah. Because like, at the park, they said I would just not say anything, and then in their words, kill it. And they thought I was a dick and conceited because I would just not talk, but. Then later on, I'm like, dude, I didn't come here to talk. <laughs> <laughs> See, the, so I can give you my perspective on it. Is yeah, it would be literally a state a statement like that, where it would be like Aiken would be quiet, and they and I'd be like, damn, he's so fucking cool. God, I'm so intimidated I'm by him. And then, he, and then he would, to him, and then he would, say, and then he would say something really sharp, <laughs> and then make everybody laugh. And I'd be like, "Fuck, he's so cool." <laughs> <laughs> and I would just stay intimidated the entire time. You I was know, say like, he's a dick. <laughs> but, well, now, now no, no, not a dick at all. I'd just be like, "He's fucking cool," okay. and I'm afraid. Doyle of him. says in that twelve days aching or twelve days aching thing, he's like, "He's kind of a dick." And yeah, he said you were. He said you were a salty little kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of it. I mean, honestly. Push it back. Oh, sorry, man. I keep fucking. No, you're good. You're, you're not the out of my face. Crandall hit That's that. I say that. Crandall hit, <laughs> Crandall hit that thing like... twenty times. You're at one, so you're good. Nice. So, I just a lot of it too is man keeping yourself entertained. I mean, it's, yeah. it's funny to laugh about stuff. A lot of things that we'd say even back in the square one days, we're not serious. We're just fucking around. You know, I'm like sure. if you're taking it that serious, then. I don't know. Deal with it. But got some, when you take things personally, <laughs> that usually you got something going on. Yeah, you know? I don't know. Like, some of it's probably bad. I don't know. We're just kids having fun. Hell you know? yeah. So, yeah. Hell yeah. And laughing about inside jokes to each other back and forth and just stupid shit. But it was, it's what keeps you entertained in life, and life's hard. So <laughs> have fun with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so circling back to Mira. Roots okay. Jam. Mira, like you, I mean, are you thinking like, oh shit, Mira's talking to me? 
Like is probably, that, yeah. Because I mean, I'd seen him in like props, the old, the first, some of the first props at like the Hoffman contests and stuff, you know. Because every week or so, we'd get together at my friend Tim's house, who I was talking about, and watch the the latest props for the month, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'd seen him in there, and you know, it's obviously a name that you've heard of. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I kind of remember being intimidated a little bit but because there was there was the mira tour right that you were on yeah i was on a, sen- a sentence to life thing oh okay i always think of the i always think of the ride uh, kind of was because we went on it, we went on a trip in a big bus yeah and, i just think of the cover the cover headline was dave mira tour and then yeah. it was that was you at that park in oregon yeah. 361 footed table. oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so um, that, that park rules. So that sen- how uh, does Eugene how does park? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was sick. That, that park, I, only that, one, I only wrote it once, but dude. That, that sentence, so your line at that, I would say that the line I've written that park and always makes you appreciate things more. But like that line that you have in sentence to life at that park is fucking insane. That place I remember just flowing sure. like trails, you know. And it's that you look at it after going to all the Oregon parks, you're like, eh, this one's gonna suck. And you start riding, you're like, oh, this one's dope. It's like made for BMX. Yeah, I, I remember Sesney's the one that who. Whoops who uh turned me on this term he said he didn't create it but tv you know trail vision mm. how you, how we, oh. like we kind of go places and look for the trails you know it's mm-hmm. so what we see Man. So, let's see if we can find the one without commentary i feel like those like vans pro cup contests were made for you Ooh. if like there was no injury involved it would have yeah. been like well mike mikey just won his 35th <laughs> one in a row <laughs> it's it so easy for him just to dominate those things <laughs> I remember uh, hearing that they're oh, going to kind of so change the way that contests were judged a little bit because of the due tour in Salt Lake that I ended up winning. <laughs> like, well, let's talk about what in what way. Just that it was going to be kind of – because the tricks I did, I guess, no one else could do. Uh-huh. But the same thing goes for them. I mean, the tricks that everyone else was doing, I can't – you know, I wouldn't want to do. Yeah, yeah. So – but it's – a lot of the tricks that I that they said that I learned, you can't learn into a foam pit, you know, the Weird. movements and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Dude. Maybe it's I mean, maybe pit. shortly after that they switched it to the one run counts. They never did. It was always two out of. Three. Oh, it was always two. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I think that's sick. It's way better. I think that's especially sick. with the like. I mean, those BMX triples things. Yeah. Whatever. That might be kind of hard to do because yeah, it's yeah, three yeah, jumps but yeah. with Dutor it was always like a line yeah so yeah no I mean the triple thing is a side if, it's, if there's an ever a real trails event I always think it's overall I think overall impression at anything at a at like a park event or anything like that is I think that's the the ultimate way to judge it because what else are you doing you're out there yeah. riding and when you're on there riding who rode the best not within that little window I like both sides of both sides of it yeah. same because I, I think I just like it when people kind of add both you know like kind of mix the two and yeah make make things look different and good it's just the thing that i get bored of i guess is when you see something done and the idea of being creative is creating doing it one more time mm-hmm. you know at that point i'm like fuck dude that yeah. shit it's dangerous yeah <laughs> like, but it's personal choice when it comes down to it yeah yeah, I think there's always just every contest can be different. Fuck it. Because <laughs> you got like Olympics and it's like, yeah, it should just be one perfect run because that's Olympic style, you know? Yeah. But then there's like Olympics. jams that could be like 45 minutes go until you can't walk anymore. And that's so sick, too. Here's here's this one. I always thought it'd be cool if things were judged more like gymnastics, you know, or it was kind of more technical. I think that's kind of the Olympics style. Yeah. Oh, where's the? That that's was... funny. We're looking at the that little that manual jump you did is just such a quick clip in this. Yeah. We're looking at it. We're like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that is nuts. <laughs> that is nuts, especially when you're there and you actually can have eyes on what it is. I don't know where the where the line is at that park. Then since the life's a good video, man. It, it Honestly, is good for what it is. A lot of, yeah. It's funny because I think it's really good. They went to all these countries. Doyle and Bennett and... hadn't even seen it. It's <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I think like, that video kind of slipped by a lot of people. It was an era too where there was so much happening in BMX. Just so that was insane. Filmed like shit, but railing around that is insane. 
It's funny because he had like a cover there, and Nathan Sykes had a cover on the same thing. I think doing he did. Yeah, I shot that. I because because we were talking about that. We're like Aiken and Nathan. Didn't they both have that? Fuck, that is so insane. That whole thing's like a curve art in real life. It's not. It's like it's yeah. You can see the kink in it. Yeah, it's a curve. Like hopefully. (laughs) Thanks, dudes. This is really paying attention to detail because. The, but that's a yeah that's the thing you gotta that go to this park. people don't realize if yeah. you if you've never been there like jumping into that thing every from oregon s- park man six feet to the left I is like, insane I've always and liked that the line park. is insane even the parks at home kids have i mean some people most people don't like as much because they're not perfect and i'm like that's what's cool about it you gotta figure it out yeah, yeah. Kinda, yeah. it's fun backyard pool figure out where stuff. to pump yeah. and what you can and can't do i, I mean, like that term trail vision though yeah. i've never i've literally never it's heard yeah that's cool before. yeah it's that's one. that's awesome um so what who asked you to film a section for sentence to life like who's, i think i think brian purdy my, brian purdy yeah. it might have been mira also had something to do with it but mira was wanting me to be on Miraco before that okay and on that on that trip where you heard the heard the term yeah you know i heard i've heard it my whole life but aching for the bacon <laughs> He's like, come on, Mikey. I know you're aching for the bacon. That's a Mira quote. Yeah. That's such a Mira quote. I'm like, I'm like fuck, man. <laughs> what, to, get, to get you on Mira quote? That's yeah. Kind of like the thing. Yeah, like he was going to give me money. Yeah. but. So why'd you say no? Just because I was happy. You know, it was a lot of money. and But I've always, I have not, I've, I've never weighed my happiness with money. Mm-hmm. You know, like money helps, but not when you're that young and don't really give a shit you know what i mean yeah or you don't have to give a shit i guess i should say but i just had yeah a lot of it i mean because just happiness where I, I was happy with what i what i was and what i was doing and with the people i was working for and you know what i mean yeah i mean of course it's dave mira so you're kind of shit in your pants but <laughs> and then at I, the same time he then I heard that he's going to get Gutler on too, and I just kind of knew the road he was taking. So I was like, "Eh, I'm good," yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, nothing against like, those dudes. It's just, but he was trying to pick like contest dude, the style yeah. dude, the core it's dude. Just yeah. Painted like, a he different was going picture. Around. Yeah, than I'd already. You have a family, and look at you're still with them. Yeah. So like that. Yeah. The the choice of like the really what you wanted. St- yeah, I mean, stood true. And it is like a family. I mean, all the people in the building I talk to, you know, like. I mean, Mirko went under in like a few years. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what to know about it too long. Yeah, what uh, um, I my source for all of this is Doyle, by the way. So shout out Doyle was like we were on the holiday tour, the Square One holiday tour, (laughs) two thousand five. And good video. Mira, I couldn't find it online because I was trying to find the the DVD. I was was trying to find the foam pit session. That's what I wanted to pull oh, up. So Ma- so Doyle said that Miro was sweating you so much that he was like he was like here's the keys to the warehouse. Mm-hmm. You guys can go anytime you want. And then the <laughs> and I guess uh, according to Doyle that it, that just didn't happen. He never gave the keys to outsiders. Like only yeah, like I, close uh, close friends had the keys to the warehouse wow. and I didn't know it. that, you yeah. know, and I we were treating it like McDonald's play place. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Pushing each other in the wheelbarrow into the foam pit and stuff. And I wish I had that footage yeah. right now. <laughs> we're just being, we're, yeah. being, we're being the square one. Yeah, yeah. We are doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you're. Yeah. An, he's an era where there's only like half of his career is on the internet. Maybe. Like yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe twenty yeah. percent. It was DVD era. Yeah. For sure. But it was. That was a good trip, man. I remember both the holiday tour ones were fun. I've watched that video hundreds of times. And then maybe you can add some commentary to the story that Nyquist told on the podcast about that he wanted Nyquist wanted you to come to the to ride the, the unit. unit. Oh, and that did we good? I just, see, that's the thing. That you was did, the thing. you guys did go, but it didn't make the video. It was like in yeah. the credits, and so he was saying so maybe that like one clip was in that the video. was a bad night because it was at the bar after you guys had gone to Mira's place, and you guys were like spent, and then you were, he was trying to make plans with you guys to go to the unit, and Dave was like, "Hey, can I? Is it cool if I come?" And Nike was like, "Nah, damn, dude, that's uh, yeah." Maybe it was a heavy I drama. mean it was probably it was probably complete <laughs> it was probably completely aside from you. Yeah, guys, I didn't so I didn't no ever idea. pay attention or yeah. hear that. But that was but that was Nyquist's like full 
separation. They, yeah, they had a they had a falling out at that yeah, point. Yeah, that's so. that's crazy, man. Yeah, I don't. Every they're all fighting. They were just fighting over Mikey. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. All these pros in the small but town. But it, it, it's funny. You should we should listen to the Nyquist podcast because he's literally he's like, dude, I just wanted to see Mikey ride the ride the fucking unit. I just wanted to see. I wanted to see all those dudes, but I wanted to see Mikey ride the unit, and I wanted to see him like fucking destroy it. <laughs> you guys just get there like, where's a wheelbarrow? This one's a bit higher. <laughs> like they're like, you guys are just having so much fun. <laughs> I don't know, man. We were a bunch just kids messing around everywhere we went. It's, it's good like, to be oblivious to that yeah. stuff. Stuff, yeah, know, so uh, I mean that is not drama you want to get into. Dave yeah. Mirror yeah. and Ryan yeah, Nyquist two, drama, two superheroes. Like, yeah, you guys yeah. do that. It was, it was like, um, what? Uh, so Mirko, very quick, very quick, quick blip on it, I guess, in a sense of just a just a no. But was there any other offers? Any other weirdness? With what? I don't know. Mirko? Like, or just in general? Uh, like no, not, anybody else trying to steal you? I think at one point my friend Chuck. Chuck Fallon. Oh yeah. He was the team manager for GT. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to get me on GT for a while. And I same thing. Yeah, I just, like, just loyal. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, hell yeah. But that's it's culture. it was a lot of money. Like I was definitely like shit. <laughs> but look, dude, the, the universe the took bacon? you in the right direction the because yeah. you got a yeah. couple sponsors that you Longevity, were, you know, were true with and now they're still true with you definitely have stuff that we're still trying to do also so it's cool you know I yeah definitely want to keep doing bikes and things like that I'd what series are you on now uh five five which is weird yeah yeah, yeah. the because the series the the series the s series was just like supposed to be like a line of bikes and then i kind of got along on series two i had a colorway mm -hmm. and then that kind of turned into my frame mm. But so it's kind of, kind of wild. No, it's not different. It's not. It's kind of naturally yeah, happened. Yeah, I guess. yeah. So. that's awesome. Um, you should do a little Odyssey trip where you invite some people you want to invite and please invite me. That'd be cool. <laughs> I'd, I'd love you invite to, all the people you want, but I want to come. I, I miss Plus going me. out Plus with me. all the dudes and yeah. like having trips. And I mean, like they'd be I, so hyped. On I that. don't ride the same way, but I ride differently. You know, yes, so exactly. Just see, it kind of. That's been a you big just thing. Being is, you after the injury too, you know, that's like a nice thing to set the like, all right, old Mikey has to stay there and then I can be the, you know, yeah. you've been doing this for 15 years, figure out what the new Mikey's going to change like. my perspective yeah. it has. I kind of look at stuff a lot differently. Uh, yeah. Another, another Doyle topic was cutting loose at a frat party in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. I don't remember that. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I figured, I figured that would be the thing, but apparently you got, because if you're cutting loose, you probably loose, and so probably that's just like another loose, night yeah. in the yeah. life of a young BMX. Like, <laughs> how the fuck are you supposed to remember that? Um, Doyle's just dialed. Remember, yeah. like every day oh, of his of life, course. probably I mean, so sharp, that'd be sharp nice. and pretty, pretty straight. He knows what's going on. Yeah. See, I don't think you're gonna. I'm I get blurry too, man. I don't remember when there's a lot of stuff too. So he says in '99, 2000, a snap like Snap Magazine, PA Trails Trip. Oh yeah, um, it was a pivotal time for Mikey, uh, and yeah. he said it was just basically like it, it's hard because I feel like when you're when you're the subject, you don't realize this. But he said that it was a it, it was a time that you guys were going on trails and you were just killing it so much that every single person was like, "Holy shit, this is the kid," you know. I Morgan asked me to be on that Snap Trails trip, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like because we went to. East Coast trails and all the spots, a lot of the spots that I dreamed of as a kid, you know. So like, getting getting to do that in reality was like a dream for me. You mm -hmm. know, I remember just riding my ass off as hard as I could, just having fun. Like every single stop we went to, to the point of like Robo was on that trip too for a bit, where kids would just they'd be all talking, having dinner like people do. You know, when they you see people from the small towns and you got the dinner later and. I'd just fall asleep at the table because like, we'd be there like an hour and a half, two hours. And I'm like, fuck it, dude. <laughs> fall asleep. And it was a good time for me because a lot of people, I guess, got to see me and see me ride and things like that. And um, no, glad they liked what they saw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was yeah. hard, to, hard, to, hard to be the subject in that sense. But um, 
we Doyle and I talked about like maybe we should zoom you in for this one like is like a you know but Doyle. yeah just because he could add so much context to like being on yeah. those trips and stuff like that but because he was sober he always well. knew me as the yeah he always yeah. knew me as the no zoom we go 100 um, no yeah zoom. I, know, I know orange crush kid what's an orange crush I when I when he first saw me and I when I was in the road fools too I have an orange crush shirt on <laughs> <laughs> That's how he knew me. I remember seeing him in the hallway for the first time. I was like, hey, that's that 1-800-collect dude. And he's like, uh, crush kid. <laughs> you guys finally met him. Yeah. <laughs> Too good. Oh, he was 1-800-collect forever. He was. As like he a little was. kid seeing Chris Doyle, you had that jersey on. No footed can can 1-800-collect. Like, yeah. Hey, that's, there he is. Uh, what's <laughs> a, what are, I mean, let's get into general questions. What's the best trails in the world that you've ridden? I haven't ridden a lot, honestly. That you've ridden? I, yeah, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said I haven't ridden a lot. <laughs> have you I, ridden? Oh. Posh is the best to me, but I like it. I mean, you have people that do caddy posh, caddy posh, but from what I hear, the caddy trails, a lot of it kind of forces you high. Don't get mad at me if it's not that way, but yeah. we were supposed to go to caddy the next day. That oh, I so crashed. you never went? So, no, I was gonna. I was excited. because I think I you'd finally, like both of them equally. Yeah, yeah. but for me, it's I like posh because you the choice is yours. If you want to go hot, you can, and if you just feel like chilling, you know, racing and through stuff, you can do that also. But um, I've ridden, I mean, what was it called? Minersville was really fun. Yeah. I rode there. And Didn't we ride there on the? Mm-hmm. Rode yeah. some trails and I'm bad with trail names. European yeah. trails were really fun too. So I'm kind of I was always oblivious to traveling. I didn't really pay attention to where I was or what I was doing. I just went there and rode and had fun. You know? Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, some of it probably has to do with hitting my head so many times growing up too. But being a B- <laughs> being like a traveler as a BMX kid, it's like so different. Yeah. I don't. So I don't hype to ride new yeah. shit. You're not. You don't like how is Paris, France? Like I don't fucking know. That's what the I was. Spots say. are yeah. sick though. I'll tell you all about the yeah. spots. You're gonna, you're gonna remember tidbits here and there, and you're gonna see because I I I flip through the magazines every once in a while, and I'm like, oh yeah, that photo, and like then there's all these things surrounding it, but you don't. You could ask me and be like, what about this? I'm like, no yeah, idea, we went dude. up in that tower there, like halfway, I think. Which way? The Eiffel Tower. Thing. Oh, the Eiffel Tower mm. thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. See? but you get to see the coolest stuff because you're yeah. like really yeah, we, in the streets all day every day or out yeah, in the woods get, I, or that's what in it was ditch. that's what's cool about bmx and is there's people that do it all over the world and you can link up with them and you're kind of like a local in you know their their hometown mm-hmm. which yeah. it was puerto rico i mean we didn't know anything about it but we got to go to all the little down under little homie spots you know so oh, that's yeah. what's cool is you, down to the things you eat. They're like original. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get to really do it the non tourist way. It yeah. Way, yeah, yeah. It's much different than it's such a unique way of traveling. What about? I feel like so that's it. Is I don't know who that is. I feel like this is my favorite Aiken slot. The Aiken <laughs> part for that's some a reason. Good one. Yeah, Jordan Nutley. Yeah. yeah. One did this song. I remember him. Yeah, his said he said it to Elf, and I was like, I don't know. I think that was, <laughs> and even myself, I was like, I don't know, man. But he pulled it off. Baby Owen, seventeen yep. years old now. Almost. At the end What's of he May, into? He still plays soccer, and yeah. he's into. I mean, he does like all not the gaming stuff a lot, okay. and. He's really good at that. I don't know all the terms, but I know Trista <laughs> said a term to like an older dude, and he's like, "What? He's oh, really? what?" And I'm like, "I have no idea." Either. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but he he'll be good at whatever he wants to do. You know, he has that in him. Oh, makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Is he stubborn <laughs> like you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there? Is it, it pretty trippy to him to like know? Your past and your injury and stuff. I bet that's like crazy to see straight he, from his dad. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not sure to tell you the truth. I mean, it has it's to be right because right? yeah, he was two and a half. You yeah, know, and yeah. I basically went back to being a kid, so I got to grow up with my kid. My wife is the one who's, you know, she's guided me and him along. Wow, you know, she's so a super I think, woman. Oh, dude, she really is like yeah. 
98% or something leave their spouses after a traumatic brain wow. injury. Really? They, they become different people. Oh, wow. And I've gone through the r- ages, range of ages at different times, like like a, ro- oh, like a roller right. coaster, right? So like one week I'd be five, then I'm 12, then, you know, 16, back to two. Like, so there are wow. ranges of emotions that you feel even like I get even now like triggered by stuff and I'll be like like emotions are something that's really hard for me to handle and uh, navigate you know so I get I'll get not mad so much like just upset at things and it's just harder harder for me to um gosh I'm trying to figure out how to say it just rationalize things yeah, or something? Yeah, like yeah. harder for me to handle them all and like, yeah, I don't know, but. Well, shout out, was it Trista? Yeah, I always Trista, want to add an N Trista, yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. does. <laughs> so much that people say Trista or Trisha and she just is like, yeah. Yeah, Trista. Yeah. <laughs> I think I met her at some point, but but no, yeah, shout out to Trista. I would love to meet, I'd love to meet her real quick and, and Owen before you yeah, take off. Yeah, for sure, so man. That'd be, that'd be awesome, sure that, so. Um. They're my rocks. Yeah, hell yeah, hell dude. Yeah. Need that support system in life in general. Little, I mean, for sure, when you have an accident, your support system's like the biggest thing. My whole family, too, you know, looked out. But Trista is the one that sees the the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, yeah. your significant other is anyway. But then when you go through a traumatic thing, it becomes kind of enhances it. And that's kind of what my injury's done. It is every emotion and little thing gets kind of enhanced you know so it's been it's been tricky at times but you know my grandpa Aiken used to say that you know that point where most people don't like it and or quit and give up that's just how us Aikens like it (laughs) (laughs) hell yeah dude that's I mean that's fucking yeah that's very true to what you have going on man it doesn't get harder than that and you're yeah it's happy living yeah, Wife and kid traveling still. All you can do is try and keep keep trying. I mean, keep giving her. <laughs> Hell yeah! No point to ever give up. No. Hell no. Oh yeah. Well, uh, I guess. I mean, should we just wrap up then? Yeah, man, or that is was it great. Like, like I said, yeah. we can do as many Aiken podcasts as you're willing to do when you come to San Diego, <laughs> so we don't have to run on forever. But thank you so much, yeah. and thank uh, you, Traction no, Coffee. I'd like to thank all you guys for having me. It's been been cool cool to be a part of bmx again you know it's yeah little man. by little As any way an honor to get any to way we listen to you, dude. one of my favorites man that, the odyssey it. trip idea odyssey fit idea like it could be it could be fucking something cool and yeah. i want to i want to give a sincere shout out to to muller fit and yeah and the whole team at odyssey uh for supporting all those you guys, like, all is, those guys are i mean that's the that's the point that bmx the, should be at is like when somebody helps you build your brand to that point, and it's like, it's like, yeah, dude, you just get that legend, that legend check. It's just you like know, family, like that, you know? that should be the way it should be. Those guys have looked out. Not for everyone me. gets to that legend status. No, but no, that but legend status. You made a stamp, man. Yeah. Thanks, I appreciate it. Definitely have done what I thought would would be good for this for BMX, and have, I had others before me send me in the right direction, and. You know, I just keep it moving forward. Hell yeah. That's that's the way it should go. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mikey. Yeah, thank you, thank you guys. Yeah. Yes, shout sir. out to Traction. Shout out to shout out to Oscar Blues. Shout out to Odyssey. Shout out to Fit. Shout out to Mike Aiken. Yeah. <laughs> wear, <laughs> you, wear a fucking that was, helmet. That yeah. was an honor, man. Thanks if you want to save in. yourself some drama, put one of those things on. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, dude. Yeah. Much thanks. love, everyone. Thank you for listening. Unclick podcast, Mike Aiken. Peace. <laughs> thanks, oh, yeah. dude. That was amazing. Yeah. I hope it was good.